Okay, welcome back to What the Pell podcast. Uh, I'm here with Megan today. Megan, I'm going to kind of quickly run you through how the podcast works. We kind of talked beforehand, but basically we're just going to have a conversation. There's no set questions, nothing like that. We're just going to talk and talk about you, talk about awesome. kind of the stuff you're doing, what you're interested in, and then go from there. Awesome. So I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, well, my name is Megan Giesbrecht. Um, I grew up in Winkler. I own a spa in Winkler now. And I have cats. You have cats. <laughs> I have nice. cats. I have four. I don't know how you introduce yourself these days. That's because... pretty good. I, I'd say the best way to do it is like if, if you were to bump into somebody in the street or uh, you're getting a taxi ride or an Uber somewhere, what would you tell them? Yeah, I don't leave my house. You know, yeah, I don't that's... bump into people. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, essentially I'm Megan. I do nails. I nice. make people feel good. Nice. And that's what I love. So that is that your business then? Is, yeah. is nails and Frank and Olive is a wellness collective. So okay. we are, what are we? We're home to seven different artists right now who do things from tattoos, piercings, aesthetics, um, teeth whitening, body waxing, all of it. Cool. So if you are looking for anything that is not head hair related, we got you. Nice. So you guys don't do haircuts? No, no haircuts, but is everything that, else. Is that nice to kind of? Is that a typical? I feel like like typically like. I'm going to say beauty salons, mm -hmm, um, beauty salons, like it's, it's everything. So it's like hair, it's, mm -hmm. it's everything. Is there a reason that you, you don't do hair? Um, well, Frank and Olive started purely from a place. I'll say almost out of selfishness mm -hmm. in a way. I, when I came out of school, I was looking for a space where I could work for myself and not have to answer to anybody else. And that's incredibly difficult to do in this town if you don't have $3,000 to spend on rent. Yeah. So my whole goal with Frank and Olive was essentially to open a space for beauty professionals like myself who work in the aesthetics industry who don't necessarily have the option to rent a chair elsewhere. Okay. Because typically in our area, you're an employee. They don't care if you want to do your own thing, if you want to work for yourself. Mm -hmm. Your job is working for somebody else. So yes. I decided to open a space where you could have the opportunity, like a hairstylist, to mm -hmm. rent a chair. Um, instead of having to be an employee so but just within other industries exactly. beside here. that's really cool yeah that's, that's really similar uh to to the fitness world too it's mm -hmm. a lot of times it's you go to a public gym you like if you're if you're a trainer you go to a public gym and you just work for them they right. they take this or they take that where there is a certain independence to even though i'm imagining they're paying you to use the space mm -hmm. they probably have some freedom over their time as long as they're Absolutely. they're still paying you that's why we want that's to do cool. that right everybody wants to be in charge of what their day-to-day -day looks mm -hmm. like so the ability to be like you know what no it is my birthday and i'm not coming in today yeah that's what we do it's yeah. awesome yeah and i think i think you get good people that way too like you mm -hmm. get people who i mean if they're not really into what they're doing right. they're probably not going to thrive in that environment mm -hmm. where you get people who are really into what they're doing and it's an opportunity to really thrive if they want to mm -hmm. and then enjoy the space that they're in as well exactly i've definitely found that that anybody that is working for themselves and they have that vested interest mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference in the quality of their work, in the amount of time they want to spend at work, and yeah. just in their client connections overall. Yeah, I just... guess that's huge too. Like, mm -hmm. it, like they're probably much more invested in this this client because I'm going to guess the client's coming to see them specifically. Absolutely, they're not just walking in. Maybe sometimes, but probably not just walking in and saying, "Give me whoever you got." Right. Occasionally we do, but I always say to the girls, like, your first meeting with a client, that's your opportunity to make them yours mm -hmm. forever. Like. You work in a collaborative workspace, so the opportunity for people to steal your clients yeah. is there. But we are definitely more um, community over competition. Yeah. You know, we collaborate. We work yeah. together. We service the same clients through like three or four different people sometimes because we all have a specialty and everybody mm -hmm. wants to do what they're best at. And clients really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand. I think what, what you said there is is really good. Like, um you have the opportunity to make that client like kind of your client for life mm -hmm. like, depending on their experience it's it's kind of up to you which is that's that's really empowering i think to the mm -hmm. person too because you get this connection that you, you don't really get at a, a job where you're standing behind a counter and so it's super transactional where you actually get that that feeling of oh like you're coming to see me mm -hmm. i feel i feel important I want to make you feel good, really good too. And absolutely, which is just like that little bit extra, which probably makes a difference for quality. I'm going to guess too. Yeah, I would say so. And yeah. even just in the quality of your work day, mm. like I left work today seeing 17, 16 or 17 clients 
Oh, wow. And it, that would normally be just absolutely chaotic and horrible. And mm -hmm. I would want to cry at the end of the day. But today was actually really good. And it was because I had awesome clients that I really like seeing. And every time it was like, oh my gosh, you're here. This is so good. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we can chat. And yeah. so, yeah, when you take the time to kind of set up who you want to see and mm -hmm. who you want to be spending your time with, that really actually makes a difference mm -hmm. within your workday. And that's what we all need, right? Yeah, that's, that's what we're cool. Always doing. Oh. Yeah, probably feels a lot better to go home. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you're welcome to cry now that the day's over on the <laughs> podcast it. if you want. I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll bump up the views if we get right. some tears on here. I'm just kidding. I wish I could fake cry. <laughs> yeah, it's never been a talent of mine. They're up. always real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like there's too many real ones. I don't have any left it's over. It's true. Cry them all out. <laughs> um, so within the business, are you are you working within the business as well, or is mm -hmm. the are you just operating the business, or no, maybe both? I am still at a point where. If I am not working with clients, mm -hmm. there's no income. Mm -hmm. So when I see you, that is my paycheck. So if I'm, yeah, if I'm not at work, there's no money coming to me. There's no money. So yeah, the girls, um, they all pay rent, but essentially everything goes towards supporting the business, making sure that rent is paid, mm -hmm. utilities are on, we have product to do services. Um, and at the end of the day, yeah, it's kind of all about the services that I'm doing. So and what, what services, does, what services do you do? I personally am a licensed esthetician, okay. so that means that I can do facials, relaxation massage, manis, pedis, gel nails, um, lash and brow tinting, as well as like brow waxing and body waxing. Um, at this point, I have majorly phased out nails just okay. because it was what I loved when I started, but I found other passions throughout mm. Throughout learning and throughout my experience in the industry so at this point i actually specialize in permanent makeup so like brow tattooing um i do body piercings which has been new to me and extremely fun um what else do i do is it satisfying when you piercing someone like after you get used to it is mm -hmm. it kind of like yeah like in the beginning um i would push a needle through and instantly my whole body would start shaking oh yeah like just the adrenaline that runs through yeah. you and you're like Shit, like i just did that i just put a hole in that's you. wild and it's crazy and like i myself like i started getting piercings when i was maybe six aside from like my ears when i was mm -hmm. three but yeah like that was always so much fun to me and so i have always wanted to do it but i mean it took me a while my my dad especially does not love piercings oh really and okay so he didn't <laughs> love the idea the very first time i brought up the fact that i wanted to do it mm -hmm. back when i was in aesthetic school like but, you know, we've all changed. We've all grown. <laughs> yeah. We've all come to realize that it's not all bad. They're not so bad. <laughs> right. And in my defense, I like to believe that somebody who has the integrity to get as much education as they can on mm -hmm. this service, piercing, unfortunately, is not regulated in Canada. Oh, really? You do not have to have any type of certificate, any well, type of training. Looks like this room isn't just a podcast room. It's true. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's true. I mean, and that's the thing, though, an unregulated industry essentially means that you can go out and you can learn from anybody you would then have to do your due diligence and make sure that you're learning from somebody who actually knows what they're doing correctly okay so i mean yeah we have lots of great piercers around town they have learned many many things from many many people and that's awesome there's a lot to be said with just experience mm -hmm. but i myself have always been very focused on hands-on learning and knowing that i'm doing the best that i can yeah. at that point even when i'm learning and so yeah flew myself to toronto spent way too much money stayed out there for a weekend learned how to pierce essentially learned that have a needle yeah. push through body okay and just repeat and i was like that seems way too easy but i guess that's what we're doing have you done any of your own piercings mm -mm. no i'm still too scared that's yeah that's wild like it's I think it, I think I heard somewhere that that's something that your body naturally resists is you like piercing right. your own skin. Well, I would believe that because it, it's like you're no that you're in danger. You right. can't do that to yourself. Well, just the way that my body reacted after doing it to somebody else makes yeah. me go like, how would I ever do that to me? But so many of my clients come through and their first piercings were done by themselves at home. I was gonna say, yeah. how many people do you get that come in? Like I remember uh, in high school, I had a friend who pierced his own ears mm -hmm. and he passed out in the bathtub in yeah, the process. Exactly. And his, his sister found him in the bathtub, blood Horrible. going down the side of his face. Like what happened in here? <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, what are you doing, man? That's probably yeah. why there's people who get paid to do it. Well, that's, that's why I like to do it. Yeah. That Damn. way I can catch you if you fall. Yeah. You know? Do you have people that pass out ever from that? I have not had any yet, but I have heard many, many stories. 
And so reading those stories is really great because mm -hmm. I feel like I know how to prepare for you if you do yeah. fall at me. But wow, I'll put you in a chair. We'll put armrests on that chair and we'll hope you just won't go anywhere. Yeah, just just strap them down. <laughs> exactly. Lean I, back, please. I remember when I was young, like I wanted to get my ears pierced so bad. Mm -hmm. Like I really wanted to is like, hey, this is going to be it. I'm going to be cool now. And I remember going to like, going to my mom, I'm like, can I get my ears pierced? And she's like, yeah, go ahead. Like, do what you do whatever you want. Right. I'm like, cool. So I went to the place and I'm like, can I get my ears pierced? And they're like, well, you need a parent signature. I'm like, oh, okay, that's easy. My mom said I could. I walk back and she yeah. walk back and I'm like, mom, can you sign this thing so I can get my ears pierced? She's like, no. So you can get your ears mom. pierced, but you have to do it yourself. Like you have to, if they don't let you, then you oh, don't get no. them pierced. And I was like, all right. So since then, I've never got my ears pierced. Well, and I know a guy. Be, <laughs> we're I doing live, live on the live You should have told podcast. me. I could have yeah. brought my stuff. Oh, man. And then I'd be the guy to pass out. Man, probably. Shop. Well, that'd be good. We can have a DIY tutorial video. Yeah. What to do it, when you are passing out. This sounds like a good YouTube video. Okay. I'll see you next week. Yeah, I do we'll it. set this up. Um, we're doing a walk-in day on Saturday. Come at the end of the day. Yeah, my ears pierced, man. That, I might Tempting. have to take you up on that. Tempting. Um, I got my legs waxed the other day. Oh, how was that? Did Jasmine do that for you? Yeah, it was painful. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's going to be a YouTube video as well. And mm -hmm. um, I was like anticipating it to be really bad. Okay. Because people had told me, they're like, yeah. I, I asked, what is it in comparison to tattoos? Right. Um, and they're like, it's it's like right on par. And they're like, it, and I'm like, okay, hey, how long does this take? I'm thinking it's going to be like five minutes. They're like, oh, like 30 minutes. I'm like, this sounds way worse Just than I thought it was. Up. But it wasn't yeah. that bad. There's like some oh. spots that were really bad, like around my knees and stuff like that. And the ankles, probably. The ankles were bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was rough. Um, but it was pretty quick. I like, guess yeah. just kind of go. A good esthetician will make it pretty good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I was amazed by was like uh, the feeling afterwards, like oh, where your skin. Best. Well, it was smooth, but the right. skin feels like. Clammy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like, do girls do that every time they get their legs waxed? They, uh -huh. This is what they go through? Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. So like, we don't have to do anything. Guys, we're just like. About it. We just wake up and hopefully we're okay. <laughs> and we just day. go with it. Yeah, Whatever it is, that's what we're doing. Half of us can't even do that. We wake up and we're still a mess. We're like, oh, we're just going to make it through another day. Yeah. Do you get, You're lucky. Do you get many guys in into like mm -hmm. your business? Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely been getting more and more the longer we're there and the longer people realize like what we do. Okay. Um, And just kind of what our vibe is. I would say we are a very gender neutral space mm. it's very just chill vibes yeah <laughs> good vibes only you know good vibes only yeah. <laughs> honestly i mean and that is one of the things that we get the most is just like oh wow like it's just so calming to come in here it's so relaxing yeah um and i mean now like our tattoo artist is a male and so that okay. always helps to like have that male energy around and it yeah. always helps even women when they see a man in there they're mm. like oh hey, you know i should get my husband to come in oh, and yeah. i mean we're constantly like yeah bring your man back, bring your yeah. man's like, just bring them in for anything. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I've had lots of clients be like, I don't know. And then eventually they come in and they're always hooked. They'll yeah. always come back yeah. because men are almost like men are the best clients. They're so loyal. And when they find somebody that they like, yeah. that is all they will do. Yeah. Cause they're terrified to, exactly. to change anything. Yeah, they don't want to see anybody else. They don't want to yeah. have to make that connection yeah. again. You are mine now. And that's what <laughs> yeah. we're doing. I, oh, right. I can relate to that so much. It's like, now I have to build up this like, this relationship mm -hmm. i don't want to be in this environment to begin with mm -hmm. and it's like once you find someone you're like okay hey, that's it i'm locked in it's so true yeah no i um recently we've had a lot of people traveling obviously with things being more accessible yeah um and so i've been doing a lot of mail waxing which has really? been lots of fun yeah and is that like it i, I imagine it's typically like back and chest yeah, yeah? yeah. we do only like we don't do male genital waxing, okay. I'll say. Other than that, you can have whatever you want yeah. waxed. Um, but essentially, yeah, with with our men, it tends to be backs and chests, mainly yeah. backs. But wow, I can't I can't jump on that. Like, <laughs> I remember when like Jasmine was waxing my legs. She's like, yeah. you have like hairy calves. I'm like, oh, cool. Right. Oh, she's like, oh, we could wax your chest and your back. Oh, my God, there's nothing to wax. I'm like, but that, that is exactly why it would be a better experience for you. Really? If there is more hair that is coming out at one time, it's going yeah. to feel worse, right? Oh, okay. If your hair is pretty sporadic and spread out, yeah. we can do much bigger sections. It'll come off faster and it won't be as painful because it's Dang. just like 17 hairs in the same area that yeah. was like 54 hairs. So you that's... pull out one hair, it's okay, right? If you pull out a chunk. Yeah, that's what I was That's okay. what I was terrified by. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is all just going to come off at once. Well, right. Dang. I always, I, one thing I do regret is like, 
um having tattoos and mm. then not like either doing like laser hair removal in some spots okay. or, or even like like beforehand because yeah. of the hair growing over yeah because yeah. even after the one on my calf it looks way different now mm -hmm. it's like ah oh, i should have done this way beforehand do you guys do stuff like that too like like removals yeah um we don't do laser hair removal right now it would be really cool i just don't yeah. have a technician who does it yeah um so just waxing i am looking into doing tattoo removal oh actually. really yeah it would be mainly for like permanent makeup tattoos so like brows okay. and eyeliner and anything that has been botched in the permanent makeup kind of world you see um, that quite a bit really yeah i mean we live obviously in an area that loves to save money yeah right and so if you see a regular service that is typically 350 to 400 dollars, and somebody is offering it for 150 bucks it's very easy to jump on that but but that's like it's, it's a tattoo isn't it it's a tattoo it's semi-permanent so it is it's not as deep into your dermis as a regular tattoo is okay but it definitely does stay for years so i mean mine have been done mine were done in 2019 they haven't been touched for four years and okay. they still look like they were done so i'm trying to see now exactly you can't tell no they're supernatural Damn. and that's what microblading is supposed to be i should get a beard you should get yeah. a beard you can actually do um a hairline pigmentation okay so if you are somebody that is dealing with like a receding hairline or just like a lack of density mm -hmm. in certain areas you can actually fill that in really with, like a permanent makeup style yeah it's pretty cool that's cool mm -hmm. and so you do that as well you like that's as of right now i'm only focusing on brows but i do plan to get into yeah scalp pigmentation okay. it's called and then permanent eyeliner um you can do permanent lip blush you can do freckles with um permanent makeup essentially um and you can also do areola reconstruction really which is really cool for breast cancer survivors that's so, wild mm -hmm. i never knew that was all a thing oh yeah this is a whole different world it's true there is so many really really cool things coming out of the aesthetics industry yeah. that are not just to make you feel as pretty as the model on the front page mm -hmm. it is about just gaining your self-confidence back yeah. and just becoming the person that you once were and yeah. you might have lost in a way yeah. so yeah it's very rewarding it's like you're saying too like um i'm imagining your dad was resistant to the mm -hmm. piercing just be mm -hmm. is it typically because of our area is resistant to that kind of stuff is that yeah. along the lines i mean when i got my so i had my ears pierced when i was young mm -hmm. and then in high school my first pierce okay and it was something super easy you could get it done at shoppers they did it with the gun the whole whatever yeah would not recommend we're not doing that anymore yeah who is that who's no that person guns. that works at shoppers who's just doing piercings whoever they decide to hire that day the same one that's at claire's mm -hmm. Does she yeah. just work double shifts yeah pretty much okay cool. yes not so good i don't love it <laughs> but i uh yeah i came home and i said dad what do you think and essentially he told me that i would end up being unemployed because oh. this is going to lead to eyebrow rings and tongue rings and lip rings and you're not going to be able to speak and you won't be able yeah. to you know get yourself through an interview so yeah. next thing you know you have hand tattoos and well, neck right. tattoos so then and... i decided i might as well just <laughs> yeah. you know start my own business yeah. and make myself my boss yeah. so that nobody could tell me no yeah <laughs> so that's awesome i haven't been fired because of my tattoos or piercings yet and i really appreciate it. yeah that's <laughs> yeah isn't that the luxury of kind of running your own thing though too not that, that nice. i feel like piercings nobody really cares about it's becoming a way more mainstream now yeah. thank goodness like even like I, I feel like you even see more guys with piercings too mm -hmm. Um, at least I have any, I almost don't even think anything of it. I think maybe no. in the past I, w I would have thought more of it, but now I'm like, I don't even like notice I love it. Yeah. It's just a way to express yourself, right? Yeah. Like whether it's chain around your neck yeah. or a chain in your nose. Like yeah. I actually, in my training, like probably half of my piercings were men, which oh, really? was really cool. I did a lot of men's lobes and actually a mo lot of men's, um, noses. Yeah. Which I, was I would sweet. say that was, that's probably the two I've seen the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's... I think it's cool. And it's wild, uh, even if there is a bit of a stigma around it. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, for me, I'm like, I would be unaware of it. Right. But uh, it's crazy because it's less permanent than a tattoo. Well, exactly. Which, I think that's why I like it. Yeah. Because it's like. It's less of a commitment to it's the It's less thing. of a commitment. Yeah. Right. And everyone goes, oh, man, like, I really want to, but I'm scared. And I'm like, well, what are you scared of? Well, yeah. what if it looks bad? Take it out. You know, yeah. Well, there's going to be a mark. No, there's only going to be a mark if you allow it to heal. Yeah. If you just take it out because you don't like it and you clean that piercing, yeah. keep it clean while you're healing it it'll heal over and you'll never know that it was there yeah uh, that then, was such a such a novel idea right you can just do it and take it out is it are most people nervous to get piercings or is it a lot of people are yeah it it, it comes and it goes like i had a seven-year-old who was like 
not a problem. Mom, yeah. don't hold my hand. I'm fine. Oh, just right in there. Yeah. And then today, I don't know, it was probably her 22nd birthday and she walks in. I am shitting my pants. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's great. Don't worry. It'll be fine. So then is it, are people usually surprised about how easy it is or are they surprised about like, is it pretty, can it be pretty painful? I would say so far, everybody has pretty much said, oh, wow, that was much easier than I thought. And so I don't know if that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I try to be quick. I try to like do everything in as swift movements as I can, yeah. because to me, like the more times we're going to push something through, the more that's going to just cause discomfort. But I mean, yeah, we did a nose piercing today and it was maybe 10 seconds from pierce to the jewelry in and the thing out. And she just looks at me and Good to go. it's done. I was like, yeah, that's why you're good. You can go. Dang. Now, man, I feel like I need to just try it. Honestly, I feel like you I should. just need to try it. I'm trying to think of like if it's, it's only so the ears pierce or like what about the skin? Like, do you do the the skin piercings? Like a dermal. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I'd get that, but I'm just curious. I don't know how those work even. Right. So I did one in school. Okay. I did want to get the chance to do it because I think it is so cool. Um, when I was in high school, I wanted to get my own, but I mm -hmm. never did. Technically. A dermal is not actually considered a piercing. Okay. So a piercing is something that will separate your skin out of the way and it'll allow something to enter it. Okay. A dermal is actually a hole punch. So what we do is we use the same biopsy, uh, like skin biopsy tools that the hospital does yeah. to like take a skin biopsy and you punch that in and you cut out a little like tube of skin oh, essentially no. and you pull it out. You have to like do it all certain whatever and it comes out. Yeah. And then you take this little like a little foot essentially the round piece that has like three holes in it there's two okay. on one side and one on the other and the post is a little bit closer to the one hold side okay and then you push those two holes in and you let it snap in and there's actually like a click you can feel it click into place but it leaves a lot of pressure it's terrifying i felt like i was going to just like rip her whole face off because yeah. we're doing it on the side of her face here oh, on the face yeah too. and i was like that's so like <laughs> i don't like it close it, your eyes do it seem like it hurt Oh, yeah, they hurt like a bitch. They're not fun. Yeah, that sounds like a terrible experience. The first okay, I'm video I watched sure. was a girl getting her back dimples done, and she was just screaming, and that was me going, okay, I'm out. Like, if that's what it's going to be like, yeah, I don't want no, any part of it. No. So I have mixed, like, I have mixed opinions on the dermals. That's wild. I think they're really cool, but it's a commitment mm. because you will have to go see a surgeon to take it out. Oh, really? It's a surgical procedure, essentially. We are taking a chunk of your skin out and we are putting something in the holes in that little disc yeah. that allows the skin to grow through that so that it keeps it in place because your skin isn't just gonna yeah so it grows through there to hold it and like keep it stuck in your skin so it's not migrating around and moving around your skin but my um my instructor in my course she had one on her wrist and she forgot when yeah. she was bringing her groceries in She's a nice, strong lady who brings all of her groceries in at once. Did she rip she it dropped off? her bag and it all just, it, yeah, she forgot. It caught on her piercing and it ripped it right out of her arm. And that can't feel good. It cannot feel good. Dang. No, it is not a good feeling at all. And so, Dang. I mean. I seen a girl with her, and, like, is that dermal? Der yeah. No, you're, these would be a straight through and through. So they're just going through the cheek? If there is an opportunity to put something through the skin all the way, that yeah. is typically what you should do. Okay. Um, instead of implanting something, because our bodies do try to reject, mm. but something that is through and through, your body is much more likely to accept as its own and just kind of work around. Okay. So, so would that would something like that or even like a, a lip piercing, does that not hit the, the teeth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I was actually just reading um in this forum online where we can ask questions and like learn from other piercings. Yep. Someone had actually just asked that. They're like, should I do um like a little upper lip thing on a client that has braces? Now you have mixed opinions. Yeah. One girl chimed in and said, I had mine done when I was 16 with braces. And my dentist actually said that she really appreciated it because okay. it protected my teeth enamel from the jewelry. Because often any mouth piercing is going to wear away at your teeth. It's going to wear away at that enamel and it's going to cause damage over time. Okay. It's just inevitable. Metal on teeth. Yeah. That's what it does. Doesn't... <sighs> but she said that they had appreciated that it was keeping it off of the enamel. Okay. But then she also said, but I also remember it getting stuck on my braces over and over and causing me a lot of pain. Yeah, and so I guess you have to decide 
Man, you know, what a roller coaster. Well, right. To me, it's... get your teeth done yeah. and then make them look good yeah. because nobody wants to look at the hanging thing in your mouth when you've got braces everywhere yeah. and like just keep as little metal in your mouth at yeah. one time as possible. Yeah. Easier on everybody. That's one thing you don't see as much either. Like you don't see as many tongue piercings. I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like piercings, they come and go. They're in and out it's of style. Kind of phases in and out. What's yeah. in now? Like what would be the, the popular Eyebrows thing? are so? coming back in. Oh, really? Can yeah, I? anything that was big in the 90s. So I actually have clients messaging me. That's awesome that the 90s is coming back. It's that my so good. favorite. I love it so much. I had a client. She's like, yeah, I graduated with your sister. And she's 10 years older than me. Okay. And I've been out of school now for 10 years. So that puts her 20 years out of school. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I want to put my belly button ring back in. Would that be okay? I'm like, you don't have to ask permission. <laughs> you can. Yeah. You're a grown adult now. Yeah. <laughs> Girl can do what you want. Yeah. So yeah, bellies are coming back in for sure. I just put mine back in. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's cute. And then eyebrow rings are coming back. The whole like notched brow trend has been really fun. Like with the you, hair the thing. The hair. Oh man, that's so mm-hmm. cool. I see it. And I, I just assume, I always just in my head to make it seem cooler. Right. I'm always like, they their hair just grew like that. Yeah. It's and on I'm purpose. just like, this is this they have a scar there. That's right. why that's there. I think it's the coolest thing. I'm actually so upset that I had my brows microbladed okay. because if I were to wax that hair out, you wouldn't be able to tell. Oh, it would still look like an mm-hmm. eyebrows there. Well, yeah, there's a tattoo. So if I were to just oh. wax all my eyebrows off, my tattoos Shoot. would still be there. So it's good and bad. Shoot, I'm going to go all in. I'm just going to get my ears pierced. I'm going to do the, do it. Let's the put notch. Let's put a notch and then yeah. we'll put a little eyebrow ring in there right away. Just everything. By the time I leave, I'm just a different Gosh. human. Just, Robot. Yeah. I'll come start Whoa. training clients. They're like, what's going on with him? Who are you? Yeah, what is, are you he, okay? Yeah, is he going through something right now? <laughs> It'd be kind of funny though, too. And just to see my mom, she'd be like, you doing okay, Belly? Absolutely. I finally did it. Yeah, I finally did. Yeah, I didn't need your <laughs> it's signature anymore. only been anymore. years, but yeah. I waited until I could sign for myself. Yeah. So which which one do you like doing the best? I go to the kind of the the jobs you do within your job. A really hard question. Maybe I should include running the business too. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I I love that it just is what it is. If okay. that makes any sense, you yeah. know, I love the fact that like I get to do behind the scenes business things. That is something that I have really grown to love mm. and find passion in that i didn't know existed yeah um ultimately one day i would love to just be hands off with clients and just training and running the show yeah. and just making sure that everybody is being taken care of yeah um staff and clients but i love getting to do it yeah. you know and i i don't know Lately, I've just been loving piercings because it's new to me and yeah. i think i just really enjoy whatever is fresh and a bit of a bit of like uh what's the word i'm looking for not an obstacle but it's a bit of a it's a challenge, a challenge. Yeah, it's Thank something you. new yeah yes it's a challenge yeah. like even today so that super easy nose piercing that we did she came oh. in with a friend her friend it took me 20 minutes to get the needle off of the nose ring why <laughs> i don't know it was just stuck it's stuck so what do you do yeah what do you call there is no school there is no person that yeah. you can just call up and be like hey You've got a needle stuck to your face and I can't just put it back through your nose and take it out. So I think part of what I really love is that I get to problem solve and yeah. I love to go through these experiences and learn from them and be like, okay, this is what we did this time. This is what we're going to do mm-hmm. differently so that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's just fluke. For whatever reason, this ring was just slightly too big for that needle and I just didn't want to come off. Yeah. And so eventually we worked it off and it was all good. But- that's cool. I think I think that's a common thing, especially with um people who tend to get into business Mm -hmm. because i can relate to that a lot where Mm -hmm. it's uh, things like this taking on things like this or uh, just different activities where i'm like hey this challenges me challenges me and stimulates me again Mm -hmm. i still like doing the thing i'm doing i still like training people but there's something um something kind of stimulating or satisfying and i feel like it opens the door uh i don't know maybe maybe you see similar clients even with the piercings and stuff but it opens the door for like new opportunities, Absolutely. new relationships, new uh, meeting new people and getting new perspectives, mm-hmm. at least for me, especially in, in these environments, including like the YouTube stuff or the, mm-hmm. the reels and stuff like that. It's like I'm so uncomfortable, right. especially being on video and knowing I'm on video. Um, a little bit more comfortable than I was in the past, but there's mm-hmm. some days where I'm, I still lock up that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's, it's, yeah, it's stimulating. It's nice. Like, I yeah. would not have it any other way. Where I do know people who would have it another way. Right. So I feel, I feel like it's a bit of a personality 
type Mm -hmm. you would you say so too yeah i think so some people are very happy to know what they know and do what they do Mm -hmm. i don't think i have ever been that person i am always looking for something else always Mm -hmm. trying to learn something new always trying to just grow i Mm -hmm. guess like i'm tired of being stagnant and when things get stagnant i get bored Mm -hmm. and then what then i'm just over running this business i'm out of here yeah yeah it was fun for three years but I'm tired. Yeah, and you <laughs> see, you see that all the time too, where you mm-hmm. walk into into a business, and it's almost like you can feel yeah. the age of the business it's true. within it. And to me, it's a, it, it's kind of exciting sometimes, and then it's kind of sad because in mm-hmm. my head, I'm like, ooh, if they did this or if they tried this, right? You got to keep it fresh. Yeah, you got to keep people excited about your business because yeah. that's what people coming. That's what keeps people coming back. Yeah, they almost want to feel invested in what's the new thing that's coming. What yeah. else are you going to add on? What else do you do that I would want to do? Like, yeah. People love being a part of things. And yes. so I think, yeah, taking people's like, what are you looking for? Yeah. And then figuring out how to bring that in. People are looking for better eyebrows. So I'm going to figure out how to remove your old ones because we made a little bit of a mistake and that's okay. And yeah. everybody has to learn somewhere. And that is the hard part about what I do is that as permanent makeup, like I went, I took a course. Mm-hmm. Again, permanent makeup is not regulated. You can learn from anybody. Thank you. This is just uh, the Wild West. It's true. The Shoot. only thing is nails and like aesthetics. Lash extension? Nail- Even extensions. Ex- why nails in particular? It's old school. So, when so you- it's been established a little longer? They're, they've yeah. put some stuff. Okay. Pretty much like when you look at the aesthetics industry and everything that you learn in school, yeah. my teacher would constantly say, I'm going to teach you this here. And then once you're out, I will teach you again. Oh, because really? Because you have to learn something. Because they want you to do it a very specific way in school. Mm-hmm. Our textbooks were written in the 80s. It has been 40 years. We don't <laughs> use the same anything anymore. People's nails aren't even the same They're anymore. not even the same. They're not even made of the same thing. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And so the fact that we are still stuck on old school mentality and education and we are refusing to learn and grow with the industry is mm-hmm. incredibly frustrating. Because to me, like, you know, there's one thing to be said about seeing somebody unlicensed for your nails there's Mm -hmm. very i don't want to say very little that can go wrong because that's not true you could end up losing your arm oh really there was somebody that went for a pedicure somewhere in the city um and ended up almost having to have her leg amputated or she did amputate her leg and almost died like it was one of those like is that like infections you get an infection and it travels and you don't catch it and you're done like it's bad news if anybody is cutting anything into your skin you should make sure they know what they're doing and they have a certificate for it that's just my yeah but, yeah this seems like a, a good thing it's, well, right <laughs> and so i can yeah, support it's, that it's frustrating when like we're not going to include permanent makeup because that's only come out in the last 10 years mm-hmm. but what does that say for everybody that's being practiced on mm-hmm. all of these people now have pigment in their face that wasn't actually tested correctly because the industry didn't want to take the time to include it mm-hmm. and actually put standards on it so yeah it is the wild wild west we can just allow anybody that we want to do it i went to winnipeg i took a two-day course I learned some stuff the first day. The second day, I brought in two models, and then they said, okay, send me photos. And so I said, no, I will not send you photos. I moved to Winnipeg for three years. I worked at a place where they trained me on the job. Yeah. I'm not going to learn from YouTube. Like, not on your face, not at your expense. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I just, I couldn't. I would feel so guilty. I'd have to look at you. Yeah, yeah. It would have to be somebody I would never see again in my life because... Just like, yeah, yeah, you're out. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's not good. I mean... People love the accessibility that an industry like ours can offer. Mm-hmm. But I also think that we need to remember that education is important. Yeah, definitely. Just because of how how permanent or how consequential some of mm-hmm. those things can be. It's not just a here, have this, see you later kind of thing. Yeah, and I think you, true. you said something really cool that, uh, again, I can relate to it a lot. Like people want to feel a part of something. Mm-hmm. Like they really do want to feel a part of something. And uh, it sounds like kind of what you're doing is that's one of your goals. That's mm-hmm. a lot of the goals uh, of the gym here as well. Or, I mean, the podcast too and the, yeah. the YouTube stuff is like people genuinely want to feel like they're connected to the to the service they're getting mm-hmm. or to the person that's giving the service. Um, because I'm sure there's someone else out there, maybe even in our area, who can give a comparable service to, to totally. maybe you. Um, I think with me, my ego would say, nope. I got to be the best or something like that. I'm but, only saying yes because I'm on a podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in reality, there's probably someone out, out there who can who can train like I can mm-hmm. train, stuff like that. But 
it it comes down to hey how can i make this person feel important and how can i make them feel heard and how can i make this environment something that they feel like they want to walk in mm. and be a part of this yes and i think that that separates the like the playing field a little bit mm -hmm. where you can it's like what you said there's there's competition but it's not the competition you necessarily imagine like right. in the way that you're you're kind of maybe winning mm -hmm. i don't know if that's the right word but yeah you know to me like if you're at work and you're busy and you're enjoying yourself you're winning yeah you know regardless of what you do regardless of how busy you are compared to the next person mm -hmm. if you are happy with what your day looks like that's a win yeah not everybody can say that and so yeah. i'm just i'm just so grateful i guess that i ended up here yeah and it does kind of feel that way like i just blinked and just, just ended up how long have you been uh running frank and olive for we opened march 1st of 2020 2020 so it was just three years just right Mar wow you got good timing we that was closed, really good timing i always thought it was 17 days but i think it was the 22nd or the 23rd when we officially closed closed so you just started just oh man was that rough was that, was that tough Yes and no. Um, I think at that point, like, I think if anybody tries hard enough to remember back mm -hmm. to the very beginning of the mm -hmm. pandemic, we were all a little bit afraid. Oh, yeah. You know, it was a big deal. And so a year later, everyone's screaming and rah, 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 yeah. over it. But like, it was a big deal. And for me, I work with a lot of clients that are, um, they're vulnerable. Okay. I have clients with kids that have been in the hospital since they were born with heart defects and mm -hmm. things. And I've got elderly clients. So when my favorite clients, my long-term clients are at risk of dying, mm -hmm. it's very easy for me to say, you know what? That's okay. Because yeah. I don't think your eyebrows are that important. And so I think like it was, it was definitely difficult because it was scary. It yeah. was the complete unknown. But at the same time, I had almost felt like, okay, I put in all of this work to get this up and running. Now I get a little vacation. <laughs> oh, so like you got, so then you kind of got some space away from it? In a way, like, and I think it was purely because of where I was at in business. Anybody else would not have had the same experience because mm -hmm. they would have had a whole functioning business that they would have had to keep thriving. Mm -hmm. I, for myself, had no retail, had no employees. We had two girls working for us at that point, but... If I'm not paying rent, you're not paying rent. So let's just call it and we'll all be okay. Yeah. Um, and so at that point, like, it was just kind of nice because I could sit down and go, okay, I put in all of this work. Now what else do I need to do? The space is open. We can do the clients if we're allowed to go to work. Yeah. Then we're allowed to do it. But I had no idea what I wanted to do for retail. So it allowed me the space to kind of think about that and focus on that. It gave me a hell of a lot of time to sit on my deck in the sun and yeah. work on content yeah. and figure out how social media works and how do you brand yourself and how do you connect with a community that you don't have access to mm -hmm. and so instagram was honestly my best friend throughout all of that because that was where i could go to connect with the people that i couldn't connect with a service based what i do i do yeah. services i can't see you so yeah. how do i keep myself relevant um so it it pushed me in a way to think differently and think of ways that I could connect with people outside of just doing your nails or waxing yourself. Um, but I also, yeah, I'll admit, I spent a lot of time just tanning yeah. and reading books and listening <laughs> to podcasts and just feeling like, okay, I did my thing and now there is nothing I can do. Yeah, I can't be at work. We yeah. just have to sit here. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a bit out of your control. Right. Yeah, that, that's cool, though, like with the, the space provided. And mm -hmm. I, I can probably, uh, again, relate to that, too, where that space provided was probably nice for you after doing that, you know, building this thing, probably the stress that comes into, I imagine you had to renovate or you mm -hmm. had to you had to do some work inside the building and then get this all going. Right. Um, but at the same time, after all of that, uh, you don't have, like you said, it's you're in a position where you're you're kind of in a... A nice position in a way yeah where it's like hey i don't have 20 people in here right now right like if if, if it happens anytime it's almost nice that it's happening now where you can yeah. you can have that downtime to kind of figure other things out and all mm -hmm. that that's yeah that's a good perspective i think yeah it definitely allowed me to push the business i would say in the way that it needed to go yeah you know like everybody just kind of had to decide what their thing was and I was the public health measure spa mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, that worked out though. Did you in the, in the process of like kind of that, that space that you had, did, 
did it help you build the identity of your business business do you think looking back if that you know that time off that you you had or kind of time off because it's like you're saying you're still doing figuring right. out social media which i think people forget that business oh. owners don't get paid for for social media but they it's are the expected worst. to run it horrible and uh like do you feel like it it helped you to like you said kind of push the the direction of your business where you wanted to whereas mm -hmm. maybe if you were in it things got really busy which would be awesome but it right. would also hold kind of prevent you possibly from from developing that vi well, vision well it does yeah i find like if i have space in my day to think about things mm. then i can maybe come up with content if i am working back to back with clients for 10 hours a day there is no way that my brain is thinking yeah. about posting on instagram <sighs> So, you know, when you don't hear from me, I am very, very busy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm busy doing stuff. But lately, yeah. I've been trying to do both and set some time aside to actually focus on the social media and that kind of thing. So that helps. But what was the question again? <laughs> just it, just if it helped you, you pretty much answered it. Just if it helped you kind of have a direction and kind of get yeah. things established a little bit easier than if you were overwhelmed or swamped by mm -hmm. kind of the, the things that happen when you start a business. There's probably a lot of learning. I yes, know. definitely a lot of learning. And I mean, I would say that it almost helped us establish our brand identity in a way. Okay. In a different way. I mean, I went into it and the question that was asked of me is like, what do you want out of this space? And I was like, honestly, I want a space where I can go to work. I can do my clients. And if other girls can work here with me, that's great. All I want is to go to work. Yeah. All I care about doing right now. And then, yeah, we open a business and then we shut down. Mm -hmm. And then everything changes and the world just kind of pivots. And mm -hmm. I know for myself, like, I felt like I went through like a big change that year. Like, okay. I just went from being somebody that was fairly self like focus and ab not absorbed but i just cared about other things more than i care about the health and well-being of my friends and family and the okay. people around me or like how well people are doing within their industries and stuff right mm -hmm. like i wouldn't have cared necessarily about whether or not sarah down the road has a nail tech license mm -hmm. at this point i would love to have a part in like regulating our industry more yeah. so that we can actually be providing safe quality services to people instead of taking their money, giving them something that's not going to last yeah. and then ending up actually tarnishing the name of the entire industry. Yeah. The amount of times I've had to like take clients and be like, no, this is not going to harm you. It's not going to hurt. It will be fine. It will last you for three to four weeks. It's not going to come off in four days. Mm -hmm. And it's all because the person that did it previously just didn't know. They didn't have all the tools. They didn't know all of the procedures. And so yeah. I do know I can make stuff last for you better. So, I mean, yeah, like I really had to decide what business was going to be for me. Okay. Is it going to be about eyebrows all day long yeah. and just making as much money as I can? Pump them through. <laughs> Pumping them through. Or, I don't know, are we going to stand for something else? And yeah. so, yeah, my dad doesn't want me doing piercings. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I know that I can provide them in a safe, sterile environment that yeah. cares about your consent, that cares about your child's consent, mm -hmm. that cares about like aftercare and the way that things go and the quality of materials in your body. Like those to me are things that we should be doing. Yeah, that seems like it should be a bit of a standard. <laughs> right. Way, yeah. You would hope so. So, yeah, if I have to take a little bit of shit from some people because yeah. you're doing something that we don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. That's fine, because I want to make sure that people who want this can come and get it safely and yeah. correctly and end up with. Him. Yeah, and you have to go you have to go back to work the next day, too. Like, mm -hmm. so it's one, you have to go to be able to sleep at night, 100. which which matters. And something that I would imagine would prevent that is let's say you don't have any of those tools and you do mess mm -hmm. up someone's um, eyebrows. I hope that 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 would cause someone to lose a little bit of sleep because that, oh, yeah. that is again that's a consequence that mm -hmm. someone else has trusted you with like yeah. to prevent for them and uh it didn't happen which i i understand that mistakes happen but i think anybody who's trying to provide something or mm -hmm. or give value to someone else um they would lose a little sleep over the you know yeah <laughs> kind of messing something up mm -hmm. um which is yeah that's that's wild that that's not a did, did you always want to get into this like since you were young or is this something that kind of developed as you got older um aesthetics i would say is something i fell in dated a boy from morden in high school okay. and i said to him when i was in grade 12 i was like everybody 
applying for university and like I just don't want to do that yeah and he said so like why don't you do nails you paint your nails every day Mm -hmm. why don't you go do nails I said okay great idea (laughs) that's what I'll do and 10 years later that's what I'm doing so yeah I essentially said okay that looks like fun there was a program um through the high school here that opened up the year after I graduated. So I was able to enter into that as an adult, go through oh, really? the whole program and was actually the very first grad. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. That's good timing too. Like, especially, you know, yeah. you're just coming out of high school and it is kind of like you, at least you're out of high school, but mm-hmm. you can still learn this thing and, and not have the yeah. necessarily the thing of going to university. If you don't, you know, that's right. not the lane. University is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. I am that fish that cannot climb the tree, you know, yeah. like everybody has their thing. I've never been good at writing like essays, anything that yeah. comes with putting my thoughts onto paper. Yeah. I hate it. But like I can sit here, I can talk, I can be extremely smart when I want to be. Mm-hmm. It's just not something that translates well <laughs> into school. Were you good at like uh, math or anything like that? Like did you have like sometimes I would you get say one? I was good as long as I tried. Mm, that was okay. the thing. Like yeah. when I was young, mental math, absolutely. I was always the first one to be done yeah. my like multiplication tables. Uh, it was a race to the front of the room. And did you was... guys have those mad minutes? Oh yeah, I love that. Just... That was my shit. Like I, I would was... love to do that today. I actually. get so stressed. They're like... so fun. Yeah, like I think I'm a little bit of is it analytical where I like things, I like to know things, right? Mm, okay. When it's something creative. I went to an art night at the Winkler Arts and Culture Center okay. and they handed me a canvas and they said, okay, paint. And I said, no, last weekend there were coloring pages that I got to color. Yeah. That's what I like. I don't want to have to spill this all out. Like <laughs> yeah. there's nothing up here. It's yeah. all in words. Yeah. So let me just like write it down. So yeah, I don't know. School, school was okay. But the older I got, the less I just cared about like these marks don't matter. Yeah. None of it really, truly matters. And what so, grade would that have been in? Just out of curiosity. That's a good question. I think it was probably as soon as I. Oh, yeah. Or maybe it was grade 10 when I had to take like pre-calc math and then I had to cheat off the kid behind me because I was like, this sucks. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I, d- I definitely didn't do pre-calc math. I did like I did. a I tried to do applied and got like 50 percent. And I was like, I should probably knock this down another step. Yeah. Well, and see, you're so lucky. You are you're a year older than Mm -hmm. i am i think and so that means that you didn't have the new curriculum that they sprung on everybody what did they do my year was like a a guinea pig year and so they were constantly trying out new like ways to do stuff so they you used to have pre-calc applied and essential Mm -hmm. and then they combined pre-calc and applied oh so it was either you're taking dumb math or you're taking smart math yeah and for me who's Parents all went through university and I always figured I kept all of my lanes open. I took all of my sciences. I took everything I needed so I could go to university. Mm -hmm. Never wanted to. And so, yeah, I took pre-calc because it was the only option. If you want to go to uni, you got to take this. Otherwise, you can't get in. Grade 11, finished with 37%. Nice. That's sweet. Yeah. It was days before the drop date. And I said, Dad, I want to drop this class and he said no you're not doing that you mm-hmm. can just pass it instead and i said but i have 37 percent, and it's at 8 a.m like <laughs> yeah. i don't think i'm going to be getting any better i didn't think this is gonna go down this is gonna be yeah. worse i proceeded to play with hot wheels <laughs> off of my teacher's desk and create ramps out of rulers and feed the fish he had a fish tank so i essentially just screwed around from eight until nine every morning until they let yeah, me yeah that sounds and then yeah then i just put myself into essential math yeah that's... And then I actually ended up in SDL because I was so tired of getting yelled at by my teacher. What is SDL? So it's self de- self directed learning. Oh, so you can just do your own work. You can just do your own thing. Oh, that sounds awesome. It is. So often it's for students that have a harder time keeping up in class because okay. things move too quick, so they can move at a bit of a slower pace. Okay. But I was like, "Bruh, it is March. I am over this. I yeah. go to class every other day." And essentials is like. I, Easy. I remember going from applied to essentials and I'm like, wait a second, we're doing, we're calculating the perimeter. We're counting on our fingers. Like, yeah, it was wild. It literally feels like nothing when you come from the other thing. Yeah. I remember one kid distinctly, like he, he didn't do a whole lot during the year, mm-hmm. um, which I don't blame him. I, I knew I had to get through it kind yeah. of thing. And I remember him going into the exam or sorry, coming out of the, the exam at the end of the year. He's like, oh man, you'd have to be an idiot to fail that thing. And I was like, yeah, that was pretty easy actually. And then all of a sudden, like, the, the, whatever, the weekend after teachers like hey do you guys want your exam marks and he calls out this person's name and they're like oh. i'm gonna get you to come up to the front they go up to the front he ended up failing the exam he passed the class but failed the exam and i, I looked at him like man you'd have to be an idiot to fail that 
he was hanging his head. I, I kind of felt bad funny. for him, but it was Prophecy. yeah. He kind of he kind of kind of shot yeah. himself in the foot he with did that. that to himself. I yeah. think. Yeah, and I remember too. And like it was probably grade eleven, somewhere around there, just having that that similar feeling of like, what am I like? This doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. It's mm -mm. it's that feeling of. You know, maybe your brain doesn't necessarily work with the exact way that it needs to 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 get these to get the outcome that the school wants you to get. Mm -hmm. Um, and it starts to go other places. Like for me, it was like why I had a job, and I'm like, why wouldn't I just work my job? I feel mm -hmm. like I'm learning more skills there. Right. Um, why wouldn't I just you know go go do this or go try this thing? That's my brain kind of started to go those directions, and then it also clicked. It was like. Sometimes even the relationships, I think at the heart, the start of high school or middle school, like mm -hmm. you build these relationships, and you kind of keep them just because they're convenient. Yeah, you're you're supposed to kind of thing. Yeah, and there's like around. a point in there where I was like, wait, like, I don't want to be with these people and they yeah. don't want to be with me. Right. Like, why? <laughs> we what don't are we like doing? each other. Yeah. And I'm like, I got like a few good friends and mm -hmm. we like to be together. But why am I playing this whole game? And then that ah. you kind of your buy-in kind of disappears. At least it it was like that for totally. me. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I was very much, I consider myself a bit of a chameleon when it comes to like high school. Okay. Because I was very good at just like melding in with different friend groups. And like, if I was playing basketball, then we'd hang with the basketball girls mm. or like, it just kind of, it was what it was. I tried yeah. not to hold on to like, yeah, that specific relationship. Mm-hmm. Probably too busy chasing boys, if I'm being honest. <laughs> that's all I really cared about, but and that's funny. We're good now. It's fine. That's high school, We've though. Grown. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's such a weird kind of transition to it. Did you think back then that you would be owning a business now or doing the things you're doing now, even outside of business? Um, I mean, probably in a way. Okay. I don't want to say I have a hard time listening to other people, but I think. I think you and I would be very similar in thinking that we just have the best ideas. Yeah, I can. You know what I, mean? I can. Yeah, again, I can relate to that. That's yeah, <laughs> like it just kind of feels, and maybe everybody feels that way. Yeah, that like, I just feel like I get it in a different way, and so I don't know. I feel like I've always kind of ended up in the roles in a way that have become more management style or more leadership style. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it was on like sports teams or my job in the city, I ended up like assistant manager of a restaurant after six months of being there, mm -hmm. being hired as a Winkler server, which nobody ever does. If you don't have serving experience, you're not getting a job. Yeah. And so it all just kind of like worked out. And yeah, within months I was managing and you want this position. I was like, mm, not really. Like, yeah, I don't want to work at a restaurant for the rest of my life. That's not my yeah. goal. But the tools and the things that I learned from that has definitely been super super helpful in running my own business and just seeing how they ran things and seeing how they had certain processes in place and how that can mitigate issues yeah and incidents and like yeah let's just nip it all at the bud before it even starts right yeah. set yourself up for success yes beginning. do you think too like you said uh kind of to go off of the we have the best ideas thing because i can relate to that too but i think some people miscommunicate that like they right. think they think you're putting yourself in a level above them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe you have a different opinion on this, but a lot of times it's like, it's, I have the best idea, but tell me a better one. Like, Absolutely. tell me a better one and let's go back and forth until we 100. get to the best decision. I don't want to have the best idea. Yeah. I don't want this to be all that there is. Yeah, it's like, you know? I think I, right now I have the best idea because no one else, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing another one that's right. better, but challenge me on that so we can get to that end point. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes people misinterpret that as, Oh, they know everything. Right. Um, and some people, their personality isn't just, isn't the personality to challenge that opinion. Yeah. And I, but I think that speaks to kind of like what you're saying in terms of the the server going moving up fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, just having that perspective of like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge this or I'm gonna ask this question or I'm gonna do this thing because mm -hmm. it just needs to be done. Right. Where uh some people are all of a sudden they they won't jump into those those mm -hmm. spots and it maybe slows them down. Maybe they don't want mm -hmm. to go into those positions, but um yeah, I think I think that's uh I can you relate to that? Like to Absolutely. that. Yeah. I think for me, like it's not that I have the best ideas. It's that I have a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. And then the best thing is to sit down in a room with other people and go, okay, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because all of the best things come from collaboration. Yeah. I do not have everything that you have done and learned in your life in my brain. Mm -hmm. So unless you are willing to sit down and introduce me to those thoughts and ideas, I have no idea. Yeah. And that is something that I've really 
kind of come to realize a lot lately is that our lived experiences are purely our own. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, like I'll be at work and somebody will ask a silly question about nails and I'll be like, how do you not know that? And then I'm like, (laughs) oh yeah, right. Like I went to school yeah, and then I've been doing this for 10 years and this is all I have been doing. And it is all I look at on Instagram and Mm -hmm. it's all I read on Reddit. And like, it's just, you immerse yourself in it. Yeah. And that's how you feel about personal training. Yeah. hundred percent. There are people that feel the way about cars and like things that I have no idea about. So yeah, like put me in a room with somebody that knows something about something I don't know. And let's work towards a common goal because you better believe we'll be able to come up with a way better idea than either one of us would have been able to do on our own. Yeah. And I think that's why I think my dream job ultimately would be to combine interior design with like setting up spas. Oh, that's cool. Because my favorite thing is how everybody comes in and they go, wow, it's beautiful in here. It feels amazing. And then they go, oh, wow. And this is the most comfortable pedicure chair I've ever sat in. Or like, this is really convenient. I do my brows in a recliner because it allows my clients with any type of accessibility disability to be able to transport themselves right out of a wheelchair if we have to into a recliner, lean you all the way back without having to get up and down off of a bed. It puts you in a position that gives your brows actually a better angle to come out with a better outcome. I get to do what I need to do to be relaxed and chill. And everybody goes, wow, I literally come back here just for the chair. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now. And I'm like, yeah, you can. It's great. You've got 15 minutes in this chair. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You can sit as long as you want. Yeah, you're staying. Yeah, it's. yeah. Yeah, I know for me, like I struggled a lot with being put into spas that were not designed for the person doing the job it's all about how it looks and that might look great but if my back can't handle sitting here for eight hours you're not going to have me work in here for very long and so everything that we have done was with clients in mind as well as technicians because you better believe you have to be comfortable to do our job (laughs) yeah and i think you can do that too i think people Mm -hmm. uh they want to be in a comfortable environment oh yeah and this is coming from someone with a, a gym one of the most typically most uncomfortable, uncomfortable environments, environments. Mm-hmm. um yeah they want some sort of like you better either like you said your personality like mm-hmm. dealing with the people connecting to the people and then that environment that they walk in on is is totally. huge yeah that's it's yeah that's really cool to go into uh designing like like spas and right. to do that did you uh did you work with somebody to design your place or did you because your your spot is really nice looking like you have um that's what's up in good. here. Good. Yeah. That's where the ideas come from. That's really cool. Um, yeah, me and my mom, pretty much. That's Most cool. of our stuff is like from IKEA and HomeSense. And I just had a basic idea of yeah. what I wanted to feel like. And we just found things. That's cool. That's, but, yeah. And it's, it goes to that collaboration thing too mm-hmm. of like um, half the stuff I do, I could not do by myself. Right. And actually, you know, more than half the stuff I do, I cannot do my mm-hmm. by myself. I don't think I could do this podcast by myself. So even to have people in here is like, yeah. is, is crazy. And it's cool to see. It's cool to see when other people do collaborate as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to your like competition thing. It's like, there's a lot of food to eat kind of idea mm-hmm, totally where it doesn't always need to be that competition. It can be that collaboration right. where all of a sudden you find yourself, you had this idea at the start. And it was the best idea. Mm-hmm. And then this person brought this to the idea. You brought this. The next yeah. person brings this. And by the end of it, it's almost a different idea. Totally. But it's a better idea and it's cooler. And it's it's yeah. got all these different elements to it that make it um that make it what it is. Right. And I think sometimes when we get stuck in this idea, like where we just do it ourselves, mm-hmm. or we we try and we, it's like, no, I'll just learn how to do that. And I'll right. learn how to do this and I'll learn how to do that, which is good sometimes, but I think we can get further with the, with grabbing right. onto other people. And I I love knowing that I can support my bookkeeper in mm-hmm. her business. You know, that's not my job. Yeah. That is not my area of expertise. I did not get into doing nails so that I could be doing my own taxes. Yeah. Like, hell no. So I love knowing that you are a small business and I get yeah. to support you that way. Yeah. And you get to help me out and I get to help you out and yeah. everybody gets what they need. And like, I just love it. It's, I think it's, it's pretty remarkable. Fun. Like, have you met pretty cool people like in your in your work? I think so. I meet a lot of different people. Yeah. Very many different types of people. And that is so fun. And that comes from doing all the different services that I do. Right. I've got clients that like I've been seeing for years and we've just been doing pedicures and that's great. And then I've got some 
like crazy alternative clients that have been coming in lately for piercings. And that's so fun because it's a different demographic that we get to bring in and introduce to what we do. And often like sometimes people that get piercings, they're not the type of person to frequent a spa. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they don't have hair that they remove or they have nails that they paint. And if I can convince you that we have a good relationship, you might be willing now to come back and see me for something that you thought that you could do by yourself. Yeah. But now you actually just want more time with me yeah so so have you made like uh legitimate friendships out of the business as well yeah Yeah. i i've got some really cool friends that i have met through this and i'm super grateful specifically for those relationships that that have been clients turned friends yeah because it is a very cool thing to just see like i mean yeah i've got clients who i don't know i saw them through a breakup and then through an (laughs) engagement And now we're doing like wedding nails and, oh, you had a baby. Like it's, I am with you at every stage. Yeah. And so it's really crazy sometimes to look at somebody and be like, like I had a client come in this week, her and her husband came in, both get their brows done and she stayed for her nails. And then the husband took the baby home. Okay. Their baby's like six months. And I looked at them and I said, wow, the three of you exist together. Mm -hmm. And like, you just made that thing. Like you made that baby together and now it exists here in the world. And like, when I first met you, neither yeah. of that like i didn't know either of these two people isn't that crazy and it's and so crazy like to even i feel like it, it's it's a bit different relationship than than like that your your friendship at least for me their friendships mm-hmm. outside of work like those totally. are what they are but you're like all of a sudden before you know it, you have a moment like what you're talking about mm-hmm. like your brain clicks and you're like oh we've been we've been together for yeah. this and this long look at what's all happened and then you get presented with like this kid in front of you and you're mm-hmm. like holy crap like this is this is unreal like good for you i saw this happen yeah you you're just like you're almost as happy as they are totally it's amazing like yeah clients are so cool and i think honestly it's just connecting with people that's Mm -hmm. all we want as humans right we just crave connection yeah and i think i love knowing that i get to connect over doing something that i love because Mm -hmm. that piece of me comes out in that Mm -hmm. and yeah it's wild to think that like yeah you're gonna walk around for the next four weeks with like my art on your fingernails and every time you look at your nails you'll probably think of me to some regard yeah and so yeah you better enjoy the people that you're spending time with whether it's your client or your service provider yeah and And that's cool i mean yeah i've got clients even today like i'm not really doing nails anymore purely because i specialize in all of these other services that Mm -hmm. nobody else does so why wouldn't i be spending my time doing yeah and she said to me, she goes, you know, you don't have to keep doing my nails. And I'm like, yeah, but I will because like you're my bro. Like, yeah, it's like I kind of look forward to <laughs> right. this. You yeah. come in, we hang out. I always yeah. book you at the end of my day so we can chill, chat, do whatever we need to. Like, yeah. it's always a blast. Yeah. We celebrated three years um, at her last nail appointment in mm-hmm. March. And so, yeah, it was great. We had wine. We just like hung out, had snacks. Everyone was just chilling while I was like sitting doing her nails. And she That's was a part cool. of the team because at this point she is. Yeah. knows everybody by name she's seen everybody for services she comes in everybody goes oh hey yeah and it's the best don't you want to feel like that when you walk into your hair salon yeah like, that sounds awesome it's so cool you belong that, here that's really cool mm-hmm. that is yeah that's very cool i think it uh there are people there are friends yeah and that's yeah that's that's so cool it's like this this whole different um type of environment that gets created mm-hmm. and i think too it's it's an environment that you get to create without someone else telling you to create yeah. it it's not a job that you're going to and and sure your clients are kind of your boss in a way mm-hmm. but you also get that opportunity you get to choose to be a good employee or a good boss totally. you get that choice like you don't have to be like i'm sure you've walked into a business because i know mm-hmm. i have where you're like wow that's a that boss i don't know if it's an off day mm-hmm. or that person running this place or this employee they it's this is not good yeah. um where i think it makes it all that much better that you kind of get to go into that environment and you you get a, this person's very happy to been with you obviously for mm-hmm. a long time and you get this whole experience with them and it's something that you chose to do like you had to put that effort in to to say hey i'm going to make this person feel good so it feels extra good cuz well absolutely yeah, every no day is a choice you. right yeah you can come in and i've gone through a lot of crazy shit in the last 6 months but every day you show up and mm-hmm. you put a smile on your face and you just do the thing yeah because you have to but at the same time even though I went through a lot of crazy shit and that was really hard, mm-hmm. my clients were huge in getting me through that. Yeah. Because 
They know what's going on. They know what's happening in your life. Everybody is there to check in on you and make sure that you're doing good. Oh, and cool. like, yeah, I don't know really what I would have done if I didn't have the community that I had built around myself. Yeah. Yeah. Over and, the last few years. Testament to that too. Cause that, that is like, you're saying like, um, it is an effort on your part to create that community. It doesn't just yeah. happen. It's true. It has taken a lot of work and a lot of emotional, like it's emotional work. That's what it is. Yeah. Right? And I feel bad for the, you know, the, the people who don't invest in those things too. Like mm -hmm. I, I genuinely feel bad. Yeah. Um, I do understand like some people, it's their, you know, it's their choice and maybe they don't find value in that, but it just makes me sad, you know, going through different things mm -hmm. and everybody at some point is going to have to go through something. So to be to be lonely going through something is mm -hmm. much much worse. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think I, I think sometimes, especially with social media, we forget what those those people around us or the, the people directly in front of us at our job how much they actually kind of impact us. I mean, sometimes too, you can you can get people on social media who you'd never actually meet mm -hmm. in the past that can do that too. But right, yeah, no, it's those connections and those relationships. They're always going to be the most important thing about. Yeah in life you know mm -hmm. in just making sure that you're feeling fulfilled and you're happy with what you're doing yeah. i think it all comes down to who you surround yourself with and how much effort you put into those relationships yeah i've i've never felt like i had girlfriends until i finally started caring about having girlfriends okay and cool. now suddenly like i've got my girls and that's all i need and yeah. like i don't think about who would i go to if this happened that's cool this did happen and i was able to go to them because i had gone okay yeah like you need to focus on something outside of this you focus on and how did that how like what does that transition look like like how does that work <sighs> like why or sure or how, how why yeah. whatever you get feel free to touch on it however you want i mean like, was there a perspective change where you're all of a sudden like, hey, this yeah. is, I, I'm, I'm, I've been missing this or I've been neglecting this. Hmm. I gotta, I gotta figure this thing out because there's value there. Yeah. I think it's a lot of things. If you want to get real, real deep, <laughs> mm -hmm. I never saw my parents have like super close friendships. Okay. My parents, we always hung out with like family friends and that was always a couple thing with their kids. I never saw my mom like go for coffee with a friend. Okay. So to me, having those super, super close friendships was not something that was necessarily modeled for me that way. I went through like elementary school and junior high and always kind of had the same friends. But as I'm sure everybody does, like there's always just that nitpicking and that bullying and that little bit of like, are we really friends or like, am I just around because it's convenient kind of thing? Yeah. And so I think that pushed me in high school to then kind of expand Mm -hmm. And not really care so much about having specific friends and move more so into just being friendly and being able to be friends with whoever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think I just really like boys. <laughs> and I always just focused on that relationship more than anything else. Yeah, I was, unfortunately, that girl that would end up with a boyfriend and then just slowly start hanging out with my or stop hanging out with my friends. Okay. Because my time just felt more valued with that male person. Yeah, that's where you that's yeah, that's where you got your your exchange from. Like right. you felt like, hey, I'm whatever it is, I'm re I'm receiving more from this relationship <laughs> than I am from these ones right now. Yeah. Um at least that's what you're experiencing probably, right. yeah. And I do think that that comes partly with like you said, having friends out of convenience mm -hmm. because you're in the same classes or whatever you grew up together and so you have to stay friends. Yeah, you got 50 kids to pick from. Well, right, you only have so many options. <laughs> yeah. But I look at my life now, I am not friends. Well, that's not true. I'm friendly and still on very good terms with a lot of the kids I was friends with in high school, but yeah. my closest friends now are not anybody that I had spent any time with. And in fact, I looked at a girl on my birthday and said, isn't it really funny how we're here? Because we absolutely hated each other in high school. <laughs> and like, she told friends not to be friends with me, like new girls at the school, you cannot be friends with her. And now we like hang out and it's chill and like, yeah. I love her. Like, yeah. It's and it's, great. do you feel too, like it's, uh, it's one of those, um, like you, you get, you're choosing this relationship mm -hmm. now. So you're choosing to be 
to build this and it's not so forced like it's it's not so there's not so many outside forces Mm -hmm. commanding that you're friends whether um it's hey if if i'm with if i'm playing basketball well i want to be friends with these people i'm playing Mm -hmm. basketball with because that's what i'm doing right exactly where now in life uh, especially with you running your own business kind of you you Mm. are in control of a a big chunk of your life to a certain extent it i imagine it probably doesn't weigh on you as heavy of like which friends you choose like it's it's like hey i don't just have 50 friends i have whatever my environment Mm -hmm. however far i'm willing to drive or fly i can i can make friends wherever um so i can actually pick and choose who Mm. who i want to invest my my time in and i want to i can pick and choose how i want them to invest in me too like to a certain extent like well right and i think I mean, when I look back, like I never felt incredibly valued in a lot of my friendships. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I remember being the one in my group that would like always get picked on. It was always me for whatever reason. And I got it from my brothers. And so I was very good at taking it and just Mm -hmm. being like, whatever. But I mean, that's annoying, you know, and it's annoying to always be the one. And so, right. So eventually I was just like, you know what? Like, why would I put effort into these friendships when in reality, it's me that sends the messages and it's me that shows up and you guys couldn't really care less if I'm around. Yeah. And I have seen that play out in certain relationships and that's fine. Yeah. It is what it is. Knowing that I get to spend my time with whoever I decide to spend my time with now yeah. has been huge. And I mean, yeah, I did the marriage thing and that mm-hmm. is not working out. Okay. We are ending that. Okay. So I have had to lean into those email friendships yep. and really realize that there is more out like there is something outside of a marriage and outside of whatever type of relationship you want to have yeah. with a romantic partner um and i think the fact that we that we keep intimacy whether it's just like any type of physical touch or just like sharing emotions like that is so intimate right yeah and we consider that to be only important with our romantic relationships I mean, and maybe it was just because my romantic relationship wasn't that intimate yeah. near the end, right? But I I found that connection within my girlfriends where I wasn't able to find that romantically. Yeah. And I just realized that, yeah, there might actually be something more that I actually do need because this isn't, it's not tickling my brain the right way. It's not pushing me the right way. It's not yeah. actually forcing me to become a better person. In fact, it's making me regress. Mm-hmm. So let's cut that and try to move on to bigger better things that will actually allow us to grow yeah and become better but we're always trying to do right yeah and i yeah to the to the thing expect i think it's you know like speaking kind of from the the guy perspective Mm. of like it is like that i think the closest friends you have are the friends you can be like intimate in like in feelings with like you're you're sharing a thing and even to the extent of uh i i mean i know how much it means to me from my friends um of wearing certain clothes and them saying hey where'd you get that 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 looks really good which Mm -hmm. for guys typically is a little bit of a of a thing but that actually improves my relationship and i I actually remember like a lot of those things because i'm like oh man this this friend of mine they noticed that thing um that's pretty cool they're actually they're actually invested in in who i am or what i'm doing um which I imagine you probably experienced in, in business as well. Mm-hmm. Like that, that investment from, I mean, the maybe transition of friends and stuff like that. But it, yeah, that is, that is massively important. I, re- I remember too, like that, that change in like, Oh, these, these people are, they're not just my friends. Like I, it mm-hmm. doesn't just have to be fun all the time. It doesn't just right. have to be, they, they have crap going on in, in their life and I have crap going on in my life and we can actually, we can actually share that that experience and to like you see people like you go out someplace and you can see it on them sometimes the, the stuff they're carrying oh yeah and you see it on them and you think to yourself man i wish or i hope this person has someone or i hope this person has a group that they can they can do it because you can I, th- I think you can like oh yeah you can see it weigh on people and um it's not always that you're the correct person to help that mm-hmm. other person but you hope you're like I know what this feels like and yeah. maybe not exactly what they're going through, but to a certain extent, I hope, I hope there's someone that that's taking, they, they have a friend who they've, mm-hmm. like you said, they've, they've shared things that were deeper than just surface level. Totally. Cause I think that's the type of person you need in those circumstances. You do. And I think that 
my ability to start to be vulnerable in those instances and clients' ability to be vulnerable right back is what has built the community that we feel so strongly. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know if I even realized it, but I had a client come in. We did a couple piercings, um, had a good chat. We're both going through a very similar personal situation. And so Mm -hmm. we kind of talked about that and related on that. And later they came back in. Um like a week or two later and I was like oh like are you in for another appointment and they're like no just thought I would come and like see what kind of jewelry you had and mm-hmm. I think they might have bought something I can't even remember talked for 45 minutes because honestly I think they really just needed another chat you they know just need to talk to it someone. was just one of those I need somebody who kind of knows and like has kind of been through something like this and like yeah. what would your perspective be because it was almost an immediate like through the door and like so like this is going on and i was like (laughs) okay yeah and i mean it's a running joke in our industry that we are unlicensed underpaid therapists yeah because essentially i will sit and i will talk to you for two hours and you can tell me whatever you want yeah and i have heard about affairs i have heard about like accidental pregnancies i have heard about hemorrhoids i have heard like I hear it all. It's crazy. I just get the hemorrhoid stuff. Yeah. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah. That's so unfortunate. Never, I never get anything. None of the good juicy no, goss. Hey? Just, like, just the hemorrhoids. Yeah, I can't squat today. I'm I'm not. Feeling Sorry, it. we're not doing yeah. it. Yeah, no. and that's understandable. <laughs> yeah, people when they and I found too, like I had to allow myself to just drop my guards in a way that I had never done before. I wasn't somebody that was very good at connecting that way. Okay. Because I've just always felt kind of guarded because it was always, well, can I trust you with this? Yeah. My friends weren't necessarily people that I could always trust with those feelings. And yeah, so, especially if you feel like you're at the, the butt of a lot of jokes. It's like, right. okay, if I share this information, it's going to be used Absolutely. or it could be used in a way that I don't want it to be used. Mm-hmm. And then you just end up being like, okay, well, you know what? I'll just keep it to myself, yeah. which is... I have always kept everything very, very close. Yeah. Cards are close. Mm -hmm. I don't like you to know what's going on. (laughs) But I've found that over the last few years, just having the ability to go into work, have some very, had lots of crazy conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go through a whole pandemic. There are lots of very different thoughts and opinions on what should be done. And we've had people of all kinds come through our doors. And I've opened eyes in different ways and i've had my eyes opened in different ways Mm -hmm. and so i think it's so so healthy to have that running dialogue um of different opinions and different viewpoints uh, and that kind of thing but you will never get the connection that you're craving if you're not willing to break that down yourself yes and be the first one to offer that link right yeah it's crazy how much easier I, i think it gets too like it's it gets it becomes so much easier to like it almost becomes natural yeah like uh like when you when you start implementing different things where you're like, hey, you know what, I, um, I noticed this thing, or I I feel this way, or that that person says that back, and you you get a kind of open that door instead of just shutting it back on them. Right. It it almost becomes like a nat- your natural response is to be like, oh, this person needs to hear this today, or I think they they'd want this would feel good for them to hear this, or okay, they're talking to me, I'm. I'm going to, I'm not going to shut the door on them. I'm just going right. to sit here for a little while. Cause that's just what they need. Mm-hmm. And I think that becomes easier the more you allow it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You for just you, kinda, yeah. Was it tough? Like, because you, you're saying you're, you kind of held things or maybe you still do hold things close to you. Do you find it's hard for you to absorb when pe- other people are uh, telling you things? I've always been a really good listener. Yeah. I you, love, like, we were actually just saying that today. <laughs> day at the spa we were saying like man it's really really hard when you get healthy and you stop being toxic and like going through phones and like trying to like (laughs) find info on people yeah because it was just kind of fun because it was just like i just want to know things it's not that i want like the dirt on you it's just i just like knowing i like having all the info yeah it's like you're not you're not you have no investment it's it's at the end of the day if it's good or it's bad you can walk away and you can just like like, to know all the drama all the things all the whatever and so yeah i mean i just started having to say like okay yeah like i will i will tell you something yeah (laughs) and that'll be good and i think yeah the more you do it the easier it becomes and yeah it doesn't help necessarily growing up in an area that 
doesn't like to talk about a lot of things and yeah it's definitely uh like it just it honestly feels reserved. like even this like yeah. would podcasting have been outlawed like 10 years ago yeah i don't know i'm i'm still that's that's why just, i lock the door when people right. come in here because i'm like too free to talk about yeah. whatever you want like and it's one of those things that's it's so crazy uh when you do those uh these new things even like this i've had mm -hmm. uh after doing this just because like you said you get your your brain needs to be stimulated totally. so stuff like this doesn't come out of the the idea of oh this podcast is going to blow up we're going to make a million dollars right it comes out of the idea first of all being like hey i have the equipment mm -hmm. and maybe i can grab a couple of pieces of equipment and i just like to sit here and right. and kind of do this i love to talk i love to chat let's yeah. record it yeah and i'm like why why would i i not do it so it's yeah, it's it's one of those things, and then and then when you open that door, all of a sudden that door opens, and then a bunch of other people start coming through, which is kind of neat in a way. There's other times where you're kind of sitting back, like, "Hey, I remember when this was this wasn't a good idea, right? Um, now Here it seems are. like it is a good idea to you, kind of thing." Totally. Um, but I think I have less of that as I'm getting older. Of that, like, mm -hmm. see see what I did here. Um, but it, yeah, it's really cool when you you kind of get into different spots where people haven't in our area haven't necessarily mm -hmm. gotten into right um i think that i mean really it comes from fear right mm -hmm. it comes from the fact that we don't know enough and so we mm -hmm. don't want to talk on it because that could come out wrong or that yeah. could yeah we could sound like an idiot yeah because i don't know yeah and it's it's a for for me well, i i don't think about it nearly as much since i was young i think mm -hmm. i had the benefit like sometimes uh like my parents separated when i was like 13 and there's definitely downsides to it especially as i get older i realize the like tendencies i have right. if, probably a little bit from that and just never kind of worked through but there's also like good things where coming from that i was never you know like the the kid who was supposed to do this or who was who was as long as i was above like getting in trouble i'm, I'm okay right. everyone's Stay happy the principal's office yeah so my baseline was so low mm -hmm. over time i'm like oh as long as like i can kind of do what i want as long as i'm not getting in trouble i can kind of do what i want and as i grew through that obviously i experienced like different areas where it's like do you, you can do that if you want to but should you do that right and you experience it but the the fear of like starting new things is is not nearly as much there where i see you know maybe kids who grew up in, with two parents who, who the parents got along really good but they had their perspectives and they yeah. had their um what the what they wanted that person to be right and then now this kid has these expectations on them so mm -hmm. then if they let's say they do start a podcast their parents are like well does it make any money Okay, there's that pressure and then if right. it, all of a sudden they stop doing it well now am i a, a failure to you're my a parents failed podcaster yeah no, we're, you're an experienced podcaster yeah i, I did it I, I got yeah i got lucky that uh, i didn't really have that in a good mm -hmm. way so if uh, you, everyone's parents could divorce that'd probably be a good no i'm kidding that's <laughs> terrible um, well, there's something to be said for it in certain situations yeah it, it absolutely is, it is that benefit and to my my family wasn't um my mom isn't from around here. My dad is. So I kind of got these these two different right. uh, competing different yeah, environments, which my mom is much, I would say I'm a lot more like my mom, where she's a lot more like free, right? but she's still reserved. Like mm -hmm. she's, she's maybe not as safe, but she's not going to go and invest in like something like a business or something like that, right. where my dad is much more like conservative, like, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to, you're going to go to work. We're going to do this. We're going to yeah. do this. You have uh, to have the path that looks yeah. If we travel, we got to get all our bags in a row, all mm -hmm. that stuff. My mom's like, just no. get your passport. You're good. Right. You'll survive. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Yeah. 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 You know, I do so often feel like, what was it the other day? Somebody said, like, why do we ask our kids what they want to be when they grow up? As mm -hmm. if your profession is the only thing that matters. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, whoa, blown. Like, yeah. honestly. Because that's the direction it is. Like, right. it's, I think I think it'd be better. Like, who do you want to be when you grow up? Exactly. What do you, What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to yeah. be happy. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Well, how are you going to be happy? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. It might be through my career. It might be through my relationships. It might be through being a mom. Like, it could be very many different things yeah. for very many very many different people. But the fact that we base everything around what your career is, what your profession is, how you're making money. Yeah. 
kind of over it like yeah and it's it's kind of cool to hear like especially young kids mm -hmm. to say what do you want to be and they give you this like elaborate story right. of like this i want to have a castle and yeah i want to ride horses and all this stuff what and you it's, envision your life looking like yeah and it's it's kind of cool to to have that perspective and just not shut them down like just yeah. say hey cool well right like like of course i always thought i either had to be a firefighter or a nurse or a teacher a because those were my only options weren't they like Dang. It's like if I'm playing the game of life, yeah. I'm picking out of one of those professions. Yeah, that's and right. Yeah, that's all you get. Like you should go into firefighting. Sometimes it's the think next, it could be fun. The next thing. I mean, I was always told that I would never be strong enough, but <laughs> I can almost squat the most at my gym now. That's so. pretty good. How much can you squat? One seventy-five. That's really good. Yeah, it's that's not really too bad good. Considering I haven't really been. I want to say I haven't been. I haven't been trying. Yeah, <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah the heavy thing, thing I haven't really yeah. been working towards. So that's really good. One seventy five is excellent. It's kind of fun. Yeah, that's cool. Have you been working out for a while now? Then, um, when did that start? Twenty twenty one. Okay. In fall, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I played sports in high school, and that was always fun. But then I kind of became like, why would I want to move? <laughs> yeah Ugh, i'm already tired annoying yeah. like yeah you know you get out of school you go through your party phase you go through your don't want to pay attention to how your body feels or mm. whatever um and then yeah one day i was like mm, really hard to like roll over the pillow on the side of my bed to get out of my bed maybe i should go to the gym cool how's it been how's your experience been it's been fun yeah it's been yeah. good i'm I'm hesitant to say that i like it but that probably just comes from how i've always been so like anti yeah. exercise you know it's hard it's hard it to just admit it don't worry because it uh there's like it goes through like a wave mm -hmm. where i think i'm not gonna speak for everybody i'm like it goes everybody experiences the same thing right. um like i remember when i was young especially because the the, the payoff like mm -hmm. as a young guy you're like oh finally girls are gonna talk to me right which just so all the guys know out there that's not how it's it not works true. um <laughs> and then you go through this like it's really motivating to get in there because you have this potential that you're going to get noticed. You're going to get some attention. And then it eventually turns into Kate. Now you're getting attention from the guys. You have a like mm -hmm. your bros in the gym and they're yeah. like, oh, how much can you do? So then you ride that wave yeah, of like, fun. how can I get better at this and this? And then eventually, like now I'm at the point where I just do it. Like now you have to own the gym because yeah. then people come in and then you get to do that. Yeah. And it's it's like for me working out sometimes um, I don't even think about it. Right. Like I'm just like, hey, now it's my workout. I'm just going to do my workout and then do it. And then the next day I'm like, oh, I have so much work to do. I OK, just do it. Get it mm -hmm. through. I, I have gotten in the bad habit every once in a while, of like bring my laptop down as I'm working out. Ooh. And then I start working. And then all of a sudden it's like 20 minutes of mm -hmm. has there's like 20 minutes of space in between sets. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, this probably Not isn't optimal. the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, I did that for a while, too. I had my phone on me and I would try to answer messages mm -hmm. and stop it from going to voicemail because yeah. I don't want to have to answer that later. But I mean, since I switched over, I'm exclusively at Southland Barbell now doing okay. like CrossFit or functional fitness, whatever. Yep. Um, and I love it because it it brings that competitive nature back out in me. Okay. It's not like a sport the same way that I was playing basketball or soccer, but it is that community feeling in a gym. You've got other people like cheering you on, which is really cool. And yeah, they've just been really, they've been really great. And so that's awesome. I don't know. I like them. They've allowed me to kind of just come into it and, and feel good getting back into the gym. And yeah, they, they've kind of given you, it sounds like the thing that you're trying to give your, your clients and your right. customers, which is cool. That's the ultimate goal. And that's, yeah, that's really cool. Especially, you know, like even mm -hmm. the, you saying, Hey, I squatted 175. Um, things like that to me, they, they mean a lot because Especially you saying, hey, they, I didn't work out in the past. Right. For, for someone to say, I didn't work out in the past, and then to say a specific weight of what they squatted mm -hmm. is actually a pretty big deal. Absolutely. Because in the past, that wouldn't have mattered to them, or maybe it, it would have, but they didn't feel comfortable enough to say that mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, it might not be, maybe it's not as heavy as someone else. Right. Or, you know, I also don't want to be known as that person. So it's... It's so you, always the thing. Yeah, I like, trust I just... me. It's... I know, and everyone always, especially with CrossFit, it's always yeah. like CrossFit people never shut up about CrossFit. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, but I also just want you to understand that I'm not going to the gym just mm -hmm. to do reps, mm -hmm. right? Like we, it is different. It's yeah, a different, it's different style, style yep. of workout. So 
I feel like you have to know that to a point to understand yeah. what I've gone through. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's horrible. I think CrossFit just gets like it just gets a was, bad rap. Yeah, it was it had a bad rap just because of the start of CrossFit was a right. little bit like a little bit rough. Yeah, they call they almost they marketed it really well, mm -hmm. almost to the point where it got marketed too well, where people like you're so it's almost like the Apple thing. Right. People, there's so much Apple, like the phone could be awesome, but someone's just going to not like it yeah. because of, of what it is. Right. And if you don't know how to use it, it won't yeah. work for you. Yeah. And it's, it, and I think it has, it's a tool that people can use. Like, mm -hmm. um, just like what I do is, is a tool people can use. It's not the only method to get mm -hmm. people working out or to get them healthy. There wouldn't right. be, you see people in CrossFit games mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, if it didn't work, I, I don't think they'd look like this or they'd be doing yeah. this stuff. So right, exactly. It, yeah that's yeah that's really cool in in terms of that and you found yeah you found that that space that you're in and does it does it feel like it's something that you can sustain long term then hope so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i'm always a little bit nervous i guess in a way because sometimes i feel like i can be really gung-ho about things and yeah. then the second i fall off that wagon it's really hard to get back on but I think what has kind of changed for me, because I've gone through phases. Yeah, I'll get a gym membership. I'll go for a month or two, and that's mm -hmm. fine. But I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for me, I just hate having to do the the mental work. Yeah. Right? You're a trainer. Yeah. So, I mean, it is still work for you to put together your workout. Yeah. But I'm sure for you, it's much easier than it is for me to walk in and go, okay, what did I do yesterday? And oh. what are some exercises that I could do that are different? But still, like, they'll work these muscles. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough. And I, I don't, don't want to just be out. squatting and deadlifting all day. Yeah. So yeah, it's been really great that like I've kind of been able to work into it and understand a lot of these things from starting mm -hmm. a little bit slower. And then I had to work it into my schedule. I had to say, okay, mm -hmm. 6 a.m. does not work for me. I can't get up in the morning, but I also mm -hmm. can't go at seven o'clock at night because I'm exhausted after working all day. Yeah. My brain's fried. I just want to go home. So, yeah, I start at 1030 every morning because it lets me go to the gym at nine. Yeah. It gives me enough time to wash my face and make sure I feel good and ready for work. Yeah. And then I can start my day knowing that I have done something for myself. Yeah. And now with CrossFit, I've put my phone away because there yeah. is no time in between sets to be checking texts and seeing who's DMing me on Instagram for yeah. appointments. I'll get to you at 10 o'clock when I'm done. Yeah. But this is now my time. It, and yeah, and you're going to be better be. for that too. Exactly. Yeah. And I, that I think that was my real shift was when yeah. mentally it went, okay, you are now doing this for you because you need to feel better yeah. mentally and physically. And yeah, if you don't take the time to work it into your day, nobody else will. Yeah. And if you're the one that owns the business and you're the one that can decide when you go to work, why wouldn't you? Yep. Because yeah, that's... you're the one holding you back. And I think, I mean, to, to whoever's listening to this, don't get it confused because remember to the start of the podcast where she said how many clients she worked through. Um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes people think, hey, you started at 1030. That sounds pretty awesome. Right. It's like, yeah, but we also started this podcast in the evening on a, a Thursday before a holiday. Right. Eight o'clock. What time is it? Yeah. It's like, yeah. So it's. I still haven't eaten. Sup I haven't eaten today. Exactly. And I think sometimes Probably people have a different food. perception, which thank you. Thank you also for mm -hmm. coming, you know, on the well, of course. in the evening. It's. Yeah, they have a different perception. And uh, two, something like this is work in a mm. way. Like the conversation, it's not like you knew what we're, or we not don't know clue. what we're going to talk about. So you're, it is work too. So to have that that space in the morning to go to the gym and to to kind of clear your brain or just have something that you don't have to focus on more than yeah. you do. And it's, yeah, for, for me too, like in this, it's so bizarre for me to go to a, a regular gym, like right. a public gym. It's so kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. It feels kind of funny for me. So I can... I can understand where you're coming from. Um, even though when you, you come in here, it does look a bit like a regular gym. A lot of the equipment <laughs> similar. It's kind of the environment I want it to be. Right. Which is is nice. And yeah, it's yeah. I uh, I like I was saying, I I don't make my own workouts either because I don't like that part of it. No. Like I pay somebody to yeah. make my workouts for me because it's just like you can't do your own brows. I'm guessing. I do. My do you do you do? Okay. I do all of my own services. Do you really? Yeah, but okay, that this, also this comes does with not just work. control and like, <laughs> yeah. I'm the best. Yeah. So I watched a girl in school tint a girl's eyebrows blue. Oh, okay, yeah. And so then I said, yeah, I don't Could think anybody trend. else ever needs to touch my yeah. face. Okay, that's fair. For so. me, it's like, like I'm, I'm, I believe in this the training side mm -hmm. of things. I believe, I believe in that. I believe in coaches, that kind of stuff, or trainers, right. um, good ones. But it's like, so I'm like, okay, if I believe in it why would I not hire someone to? And which right. I think catches some people off guard mm -hmm. where they're like, 
Well, you, if, but if I do my own thing, I'm going to choose all the exercises I like. Well, right. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And then I'm going to get in my own head. I'm going to think, oh, I should probably do this. Mm -hmm. You know what? Actually, I should probably do that. Where instead I'm like, hey, I have all these other people to worry about. Mm -hmm. You worry about mine. I'll right. just do what you say. And then I'm going to be on my way kind of thing. That's what I had to start doing with the gym because they post their workouts. Okay. So I can look into it and I can go, do I want to go to the gym on Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday? Yeah. Which workout do I want to do? Yeah. I had to for a while just go, okay, you are going Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Whatever it is. Regardless if you're on the bike for 40 minutes, Dang. which I hate. I will tell you I did not get on a bike since high school till I got into this gym because oh. I hate them so dang much. What kind of bike is it? Isn't it like a salt bike? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They deadly. Yeah. I'm freaking hate them. It's awful. It, yeah. I'll choose the rower every single time if I have the chance. What's your favorite? Uh, and CrossFit's a little bit different, but what's your favorite thing to work out? I don't know. I do really like squatting because okay. it's, to me, it's just fun to always push for that. Mm -hmm. Squatting, squatting and deadlifting has always been kind of the two exercises that I like and I feel strong and powerful mm -hmm. doing and so to want to do that all the time is yeah. really good i mean i hate ab wheels so i never want to do anything with an ab wheel <laughs> um i've had to do a lot of burpees lately you ever done a devil's press i don't even know what that is that? no so it's a burpee with um like weighted dumbbells so i did 15 per hand so 30 total okay you do a burpee and then when you come up you're doing a kettlebell swing up and over your head with those weights okay and then right back into your burpee yeah as if a burpee isn't miserable enough to do yeah, that's now you get weights with it. Yeah, that is. That was horrible. That's brutal. Yeah, no, I haven't done that, but. Well, you should work that into one of <laughs> your next. It, yeah, one just of your next workouts. Doing it. I'd like to see that on a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, I probably should actually do that. I'm gonna bring you to a CrossFit class. I would do we'll it. See, that would be so fun. You should come. Yeah, I would do it. I, would, I mean, I try anything. I I'm think like, you'd do great. Yeah, how's your cardio? Uh, it's probably already good. I trained for a triathlon for a little while just before COVID. Oh. I was on the like the. Kind of like the assault bikes, the rogue bikes. Okay, yeah. I was riding those for like an hour and a half, like every other day. Oh, how you could? Well, Tiger King had just come out, so I was that Perfect. was my that there was getting go. me through. Turn it. it on. Yeah, Turn it all out. I just kind of kept cruising through it. Ah, I love that. That's cool. It it sounds like yeah, it sounds like you're enjoying that, and then it's yeah, it's fulfilling in some way, at least for now. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's a transition. I think too in fitness, people should allow themselves to have transition like phases yeah. in fitness where, you know, if you, if you're doing bodybuilding right now and you're not feeling it and you're miserable, go, go do the else. thing that you don't even like, you know, mm -hmm. it, maybe it's CrossFit or right. maybe you're doing powerlifting and maybe you want to do bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. It's like, just let it happen. Yeah. Or for even a little while, let's say you don't even want to be in a gym, right? Just go outside and do stuff. Mm -hmm. Push yourself out of that comfort zone. Yeah, I think it, fitness is one of those worlds where people mm. just get stuck. They cannot. Huge. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I see it even with people that I've been working out with long term. They're like, yeah, but this is what I always do. And I'm like, yeah, so add five. Yeah. Like, who cares if it's just a little? Yeah. Do something more. Yeah. Because I know, yeah, for me, I did not squat more than 45, like a plate per side. Yeah. That was all I was doing when I was at my old gym because I didn't really care to push myself enough. I didn't really feel... I don't know, like I had to. It was yeah. very easy for me to show up and I'm here and that's all that matters. And that's what I said for the longest time. I showed up. What more do you need from me? It's so funny. I have, uh, and uh, any of the guys who train here that are listening to this, mm -hmm. I want you to know this, that the girls are the hardest workers that come in here. That's true. Like I've had, I've had a girl doing Bulgarian split squats before mm -hmm. who there was a tear rolling down her cheek and I'm like, wait, wait a second. You I'm good? Like, are you are you crying? You're like, this is just really, really tough. And I'm just overwhelmed. I'm like, hey, let's stop for That's a second. Not. Like, you do not have to keep going. I do not want you to work out until you cry. That is not my mm. goal. Um, where Sometimes you just got to work out through those tears. And that's just yeah. what you need. She kept going. Yeah, she there. was been sobbing on a roar. Yeah. Just, I'm just, okay. I'm here. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> We're and going I, through it. And that seems to be the mentality where oftentimes I have the guys that come through the front door and me being a guy too who works out, they, they feel like there's this expectation of, right. you know, I have to be on the same level or something mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, there's, I, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And then right. I kind of have to base all, what I give them off of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Where all of a sudden you find out they don't do that or they just don't want to do that. They just feel like they have to do it. Right. And then you're like, hey, what do you actually want to do? Or what do you, do you want? Yeah. Or even Tell the, me what you want. the humble people too, like mm -hmm. who they come in, they're just, hey, I just want to be healthier. And then you get to know them a little bit and they're like, no, they want to look better too. They just oh. don't want to say that out loud. Doesn't everybody, like oh, at the end 100%. of the day, we all want to look and feel our best. Yeah. That's just what it is. 
I look better than I ever have, mm-hmm. but I also feel better than I ever have, yeah. both mentally and physically. And those two 100% correlate. That's a good, like, uh, yeah, that's a good spot to be in too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was not healthy mentally enough mm-hmm. for my body to be healthy physically. Mm-hmm. But now that I've been able to focus on bettering myself mentally and emotionally, it's allowed myself to be like, okay, well, maybe your body actually does matter. You mm-hmm. know, you're not 19 anymore. Yeah. You're not indestructible. These things actually, they do matter. And this yeah. is what you've got. So, I mean, yeah, you watch enough people die and then yeah. you realize that something, you, if, you I can do just, something. if I could move and that will help. That's yeah. okay. And then you get to add I'll a bonus it. of like feeling, feeling good. You look at yourself right. in the mirror. There's nothing cooler. There's nothing cooler for me mm-hmm. than watching someone. On, and I don't have a ton of mirrors in here, right. but there is mirrors. I, you know, if I'm out of the way and all of a sudden I see them look in the mirror for a second, yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. And you can see it on their face. I'm like, I don't have to say anything, but mm. for me, I'm like, heck yeah. Like, that's cool. Like your thing. Um, they're coming from the guy who takes a lot of pictures in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, it's cool to see other people do that. Right. Because it's like, Hey, this person genuinely feels good about themselves. And I, I know them. They're not, you know, they're not the person who who's taking that picture and saying, Hey, look at me. Right. They're taking that picture and saying, Hey, I feel good. I feel good. Uh, I want to show you guys how good I feel. Right. You can feel this good too. Um, this is the work I've been putting in kind of mm-hmm. thing. And that, that to me is so cool. It is. And then when it's it, like you said, the number, you, you, all of a sudden you have this number in your head, which means something to you. And this, this image of yourself, that's really cool. Right. That's, it all, it all just kind of, yeah, it stacks on top of itself. Right. I never, never paid attention to what weights I was moving. It was always just, yeah. how do I feel that day? And I still do think like as women, I don't know if you have learned that much about that, but like as women, our strength varies based on where we're at mm-hmm. within our like menstrual cycles. Yeah. Right. And so I might be able to squat 175 on a good day, but yeah. that doesn't mean I can do it every day. Yeah. And I think that for myself, like just realizing that and almost trying to just allow my body to do what it needs to do. And like, mm-hmm. you know what? I am really tired today. I am actually just going to keep this as more of an active rest workout because yeah. heavy just isn't what I need. And it's in why, like and in, why? at that point, you're not getting anything. No. I'm... And really you're doing it for yourself. Yep. Right. That was my thing. I started out at rise and I would always say, I'm like, well, I'm here. Mm-hmm. And that's what I need to do. And yeah, you could tell me, you can push me, you can do all of that, but it doesn't matter to anybody but me. Yeah. And right now, I'm sure there's points too. I know I've had these points where there's some days where you're like, hey, I'm here. Hmm? That's what I got today. I'm Absolutely. here. I made Would, it out of bed. Yeah. Which is completely fine too. Like, yeah. like it doesn't have to be, and I, you probably experienced this. Not every workout is great. No. There's so many workouts where you leave and you're like, all right. But it's a workout. On with it. Got it done. You can and feel you accomplished. Yeah, you did good. Right. And that's something that I try to just, okay, we get up. The gym yeah. is your landing pad. We made it. Yeah. You're out of bed. You're that's one cool. step closer to being at work. And now, yeah, if you want to sit on the bike for 40 minutes, then just sit on the bike yeah, for 40 minutes. At least you're minutes. there. But yeah. made it. And that is a step mentally, if not physically. Yeah. But it's still a step physically. So. Yeah, it is. Okay. So uh, what's, I always ask, what's next? What's next for Megan, Frank and all of oh, whatever, man. You, whatever else you got, got going on? Dreams. Your girl's got <laughs> big plans. And it will only share what you want to. You don't have to share anything more than you want to, but yeah. you know, in life, maybe in work, in working out, whatever it is, what's, what's going on next that you want, you want to share? So this is something that I'm putting into ears of people that I feel like I need on my team. And so somebody is going to be listening to this and mm-hmm. they're going to go, I want to be a part of this. And then let's chat. Cool. <laughs> Call me. So throughout all of our pandemic things and all of our election mm-hmm. conversations, I have realized that we are lacking in childcare mm-hmm. and we are lacking in healthcare professionals. Mm-hmm. And those two things correlate. Because if we don't have childcare for our healthcare professionals, they're not going to come to our area and provide us healthcare. Yeah. So we have to fill some gaps in this community. Um, I obviously right now don't offer hair services, but that is a question I get a lot of the time. And so I do feel like the ultimate goal is to be able to expand my business into a hair side as well as an aesthetic side. Um, but that is going to take an entirely new building. 
it's going to be in a complex that I like to call the village. Oh, cool. Because in my mind, it takes a village. That's cool. Um, we as women in a female dominated industry, as an employer, I found it really difficult to keep women because they want to stay home with their babies mm -hmm. and not necessarily that they want to stay home, but they have no other option. If you are a single mom, you got to be working somehow. Otherwise, you're not putting food on the table. Um, or sometimes you just need that dual income. Like no yeah. matter what your situation is, it is not feasible for every woman to have a baby, to put that baby into childcare and to go back to work. Mm -hmm. But I also hear from a lot of girls that are worried about what their future looks like, because how do I do both? How do I be a mom and be around, but also continue to have this business for myself and feel fulfilled and get those connections that I need in my life? Yeah. Because so much of what, of what I feel women do at work is just have relationships outside of their families. Yeah. We need that. Like you can't just have those people that are your everything. You have to have outside people. Yeah. And so I you guess in my dream, right. Yeah. yeah you would go, yeah. I would go crazy. Yeah. Like I could never do it. And so my whole goal is to essentially create this complex called the village. It has mm -hmm. an indoor communal space that will be kind of like an indoor atrium okay. because we need something that is nice and warm and mm -hmm. relaxing and chill all year round mm -hmm. we don't do well with patios because we get those patios for five months out of the yeah, year yeah this winter is I'm a perfect it. example yeah so we're gonna do a little indoor atrium and That's that cool. atrium is gonna have skylights and it's gonna allow natural light into that atrium as well as into all of your offices it's gonna be set up kind of like gvc okay big square around your gym right yeah. your central space lots of stuff around it yep yeah. I'd love a female personal trainer in there. Mm -hmm. I'd love a female therapist, female based businesses. Okay. Because I'm just here to empower women. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we got to, somebody's got to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I just thought, how cool would it be if you could take a place that centralized all of these wellness businesses, whether it's beauty, whether it's physical, whether it's mental? Yeah. I mean, if we had private, like, gynecologists somehow, that would be or even a dermatologist like something that you had a different option yeah um but then to also have a child care center you can use that child care center a for your staff you as an employee are guaranteed child care in this business yeah. it's going to allow you to have your family to bring your newborn baby to work if you want because you can't give up your clients yeah you're a new mom you're a single mom you bring that baby with you someone will watch that baby while they're sleeping and you can schedule your business because you're self-employed. Yeah. You can schedule your day around when your baby wakes up, when they feed, when you need to go change diapers. You can be as involved as you want to be yeah. while being able to service the people that you need to service without having to set up a whole thing in your house and invest yeah. all of this money that in the end doesn't actually you end up just spending. Yeah. And you just, yeah, in, in, which I think is from my understanding is a huge, um, a lot of people in your industry a lot of women drop kind of their dreams because of these because they, of these yeah, yeah you can't have it all yeah you can't be a, an involved mother while also building a business for you yeah so they say yeah in the current environment yeah in the current environment but that's because the current environment was not built for women yeah it was built to send women home to have babies and to stay mm -hmm. at home with babies and that is something that we fight against every day some of us just want to go to work. Yeah. We want to be with adults. We don't actually love children that much. <laughs> and so let me be with my people, you know? Yeah. So to have that, those, almost those environments combined, you, right. it, you get that, hey, my, my kid is good. My kid is taken care of. But I can, I can also expand the, the career and the passions I have over mm -hmm. here um, with simultaneously. With people that want to support you. Yeah. Right? I, that child care wants, they want to be there to support you in your dreams and in your business so that yeah. you can do your thing. Because without you, they don't like, we yeah, they all don't have take, their thing. Right? Yeah. We all are so involved. And so my little atrium will have a cute little like sandwich bar or like a little lunch space so that you can bring in your therapist and your esthetician and you can sit down and have a conversation. And yeah. all of that idea behind collaboration. Yeah. That can actually work because you're not spending eight hours a day with personal trainers. Yeah. You're not only getting information from personal trainers. Yeah. And you're not, you're not going all over the place mm -hmm. trying to, trying to get this to work. It's right. maybe, Hey, you know what? I have time now. I can do this thing now. 
I'm going to get this, this, there's not right. so many roadblocks into exactly. it. Exactly. It makes everything much more accessible. And then the idea that we have childcare there, if we could have a drop-off center mm -hmm. type of situation, you want to come get your brows done. Mm -hmm. I honestly, yeah, I don't want to listen to your kids scream for 15 minutes. Yeah. Drop them into the play structure for 15 minutes with the childcare people. Yeah. It might be like a $10 charge, right? Yeah. We got to make money. It's a business. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you can have your time away from your child without necessarily having to pay a babysitter to come in and do all the outside things. Yeah. You bring your kid with you, you drop them off, you pick them up, you take them with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess that also feels better as a, as a <laughs> parent too, to be like, hey, you right. know what? I, I'm not just, you know, I'm, I'm, I think moms in particular have a tough time with feeling selfish in those mm -hmm. things because they're like, hey, I gotta, you know, I'm responsible for this thing, which they, they yeah. are, but it's a place where it's like, hey, I'm not just dumping this kid off. It's, right. it's still in a place that feels safe. Mm -hmm. I know they're taken care of. I can get this service. I can get my space yeah. and I'm going to come back. And I didn't just, it was literally designed for yeah. that reason yeah. for you to be able to take space for yourself mm -hmm. because that is what we need as mothers, as women, as individuals, we yeah. all need to be able to take the time that we need. And yeah, like I just think, why not? Like, yeah, that's cool. That's why not cool. take all of our issues and try to fix it together. Yeah. Right. I could use healthcare. Those doctors can use healthcare. The doctors love coming to see us for services. Yeah. So like Makes combine sense. it all. That's awesome. So if you have millions of dollars to invest yeah. in my business. Shout out to the, to the millionaires it. listening to this podcast. Also, if you that's want to hot. sponsor this podcast, that'd be great. <laughs> we can get more uh right? we can expand. No, that's awesome, yes. Megan. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, how do you build a better community? Yep. That is kind of what the goal is at this point. I, think, I don't know if I'll stay here forever, but I want to leave it better than it was. Yeah, well, you're here, here anyways. Why Why not? Right. Why That's not cool. make it better? It's really cool. Okay, the last thing I get everybody to do mm -hmm. towards the end of the podcast is um, you kind of told your what you want to do in the future and also to shout out kind of, kind of the things, you know, your pages, um, whether it's your personal stuff, your, your business stuff, whatever it is, okay. stuff like that, just that you have the opportunity to kind of tell people where they can find you. Well, you can find me on the gram. Um, what are we? Underscore Frank and Olive, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And Frank I'll, and Olive on Instagram. If you're cool with it, I'll tag it underneath. Yeah, here. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Our website has online booking. It's got write-ups of all of the services that we do, how much time it takes, how much they cost, all of the information that you need for absolutely everything. Cool. It's on our website. Sweet. So do you yeah. want your do you want your personal stuff out there too? Or that's totally up to you. Sure. I mean, I don't know. What is my personal? Uh Megan Quinn, I think. Cool. Megan Quinn XO, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I literally post like once a year. Sweet. I don't do much personally, yeah. so I find everything just goes to yeah. the business gram. Cool. Are you do you want is. me to post that underneath too? Both of them? Sure. Awesome. Whatever. So you guys can find Megan uh, in the <laughs> description below or if you type it in from here. Uh, Megan, I really appreciate you coming in, especially after a long day of work. Problem. It's awesome. I think you have uh, really good perspectives on a lot of different things and like hopes and dreams, which for me is mm. it's awesome to hear someone else who's got hopes and dreams because oh, I, yeah. I don't know if everybody expresses them, even if they do have them. So to hear about them and to hear about, hey, you're even your your struggles is cool to hear about for me because it's it's real. Yeah, that could every, be a whole podcast on its own if you wanted. Exactly, and uh, in a year, and and too. One of the things is like the guests will come back, so maybe we'll have another Love opportunity, it. and you'll have some as life goes on, you'll have some more stories and stuff like that. But I do appreciate oh, yeah. you sharing them, and uh, yeah, we'll thanks see for you coming. on Saturday for your ear piercing. Yeah, so catch a <laughs> catch a YouTube video of me getting my ears pierced. Yes. Dang, yeah, I'm actually gonna commit to that. Yeah, you should. I will hold you to that. Awesome. If you don't come to me, I'm coming to you. So. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> awesome, Megan. That was good.